Valentino summers and wave runners. Chains on my niggas like slave runners. Drug dealers anonymous. How many Madonnas can that monster fit? My brick talk is more than obvious. It's ominous. Garage is the phantom. Goose, ghosts, and goblins. Blonde mohawk, the collection. I'm Dennis Rodman. The money count is the only moment of silence. Cause hush money balances all this drugs and violence. Hat trick under my mattress. Did I stop steel? Has an asterisk after it. After all, I can make a call. I can baptize a brick as I wash away my sins like a Catholic. Who the fucking master this? America's nightmares in Flint. Children of a lesser God when your melanin's got a tint. And I can't even mention what I sent or what I spent. Cause my name in 18 wheelers is evidence. I put my fools in them cruise collection. Like the slice of bitch A to Z on her shoe collection. Take your pick, paid in full like 86 G's on my body. The new Gucci has less monogram. God got it. Let he without sin cast the first stone. So I built that all glass squad level first home. Shatter all of your misconceptions. Hold all of the missing weapons. You thought I would miss my blessing. The ultimate misdirection. Yeah. Your husband was a drug dealer. For 14 years, he sold crack cocaine. Uh. Federico Fellini in the flesh. Sergio Cicchini inside his mesh. Bitch, I've been bracking since the 80s. Google me, baby, you crazy. 89 in London pulling bins up. Type it in, Google's your friend, bruh. 14 year drug dealer and still counting. Who deserves the medal of freedom is my accountant. He been hula hooping through loopholes, working round shit. IRS should have had the townhouse surrounded. Thanks to the lawyers, I marbled the foyer, I tore the floor up, yeah. That's for the koi fish. We've been dining on oysters. I walk through the garage, it's like multiple choices. I told him pull a Royce up, I'm getting ghosts. I'm hearing noises, I think it's the boys, but I've been banging the Deutsch. We got storefronts, we got employee stuff. We've been opening studios and 4040s up. The paper trail is gorgeous. Cases we bury some before a reasonable doubt drop. The jury hung. Bling bling. Every time I come around your city, bling bling. My tenure took me through Virginia. Ask Teddy Rally Bobby. Ask the Federalis Bobby. Try to build a cell around me. Snatch my nigga Emory up. Try to get him to tell about me. He told 12, give me 12. He told him to go to hell about me. Drug dealers anonymous. Y'all think Uber's the future. Our cars been autonomous. Mules move the drums. Take them to different spots. We just call the shots by simply moving our thumbs. I'ma call some miracles with this shit Nothing real can be threatened Nothing unreal exists Fearing lies, the peace of God I always knew I was a prophet But I couldn't find a decent job Life made me ambidextrous Counting with my right, whipping white with my left wrist Damn, Daniel FBI keep bringing them all white vans through Smoking on the drop, young JR Ewing. Pimping for my paper, and I'm looking for the chewing. Bitch, I got the food, what the fuck I gotta do? Sipping pop pills, smoke for the fast food. Two twisted niggas acting all brand new. We need get some money, that's the fuck boys do. I ride in the fly, get high in the fly. Look on the brain and get pretty good. My bullet beats up in holes with a mind full of gold. She playing with her nose, but she suck a mean pole. Bowling in the fucking mix, PMC bitch. You can't act like you don't know. Get down on your knees like a top notch hoe. 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 Like a top notch hoe.
the life so man 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 hey no i'm tone bite no i'm tone bite no i'm tone bite we back ratchet gang we back with another one we back with another banger get the likes up look you might have forgot hell they might have forgot but you already know it's the king too loyal no i'm tone bite ratchet tv hey i eat y'all already know man y'all already know get the likes up if you in the building and if you new to the channel hit that subscribe button tap that notification bell so you can get the drop whenever i drop all right so boom man 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 we got to talk ratchet gang we got to chop it up look tonight we got to talk about man look we got to talk about this beyonce and jay-z situation we got to chop it up about this taylor swift situation man we got to get into this industry talk tonight we got to get into this industry talk tonight and uh we got we got to drop some gems diddy is gonna be in the mix uh you're gonna get some it, it'll be a mix of r kelly Aaliyah. it's gonna be a lot of everything because this it's a lot going on in this industry that we got to expose we got to get back to the content we didn't spend a lot of time away from the content, but we definitely got to spend the block and get right back on this industry, man. We we not letting nothing get past us over here, allegedly, uh, allegedly. And everything I say is alleged and it's all under the Fair Use Act. And you can see the Fair Use disclaimer in the description of this video and in the description of all my videos. This is just for entertainment and educational purposes only. This is just to educate my people on what we've been covering over here. Like I said, it's all under the Fair Use Act, and you can see the Fair Use disclaimer in the description of this video, and everything I say is alleged. Allegedly. Allegedly, y'all. Salute guys, son, on a 50-piece McNugget. That's how you start off the show with a 50-piece, man. You gotta, you gotta jump the show off with a 50-piece McNugget. Salute guys, son. I appreciate you, gang. Salute Sapphire, it's Cosina. <clears throat> Salute Sapphire. I appreciate you for that 50 piece McNugget. That's that's too that's a honey bun to start the show off. We ain't even said nothing yet, man. The gang be ganging. Salute. I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate y'all both. Make sure you subscribe to Sapphire's Cosina, by the way. Dope content over there. Let, let's get to it. You know what I'm talking about? Salute to both of y'all. All right. All right. So um, anyway, we gotta get to this. We gotta get to this Jay-Z and Beyonce shit. So have y'all been paying attention to what's been going on right in front of your eyes? I don't know if y'all have been paying attention, but there is a new queen of the industry. And somebody don't like that. I'm going to be real. Somebody don't like the fact that there's a new queen. There's a new queen in the industry. Salute, Battle for Life. I appreciate you for that 20-piece McNugget. Let me start you off. Set it off in this mug. Hey, hey, I appreciate that 20-piece. That's 120 on the screen right there. Man, look, the gang said, look, we showing up tonight. I ain't mad at that. I ain't, I ain't mad at all. Salute. And then who, who else we got up in here showing some love? A 10-piece from Nika Black. I appreciate you, Nika. Salute to you for that 10-piece. Salute to Binky for that five-piece. I appreciate you, Binky. You already know. Give a dog a bone. Salute, Binky. And Crystal Cove fell through with the whole honey bun because I slept through Friday night. <clears throat> I appreciate you. Yeah, you missed the show the other night, but I took the other night off, so it's all good. I ain't mad at you, Crystal. You know, we all got to get our days of rest in, so salute to you. Salute to Jackie Martin for that 20-piece McNugget. I ain't mad at y'all at all. Look, we finna get to it tonight. I'm finna cook tonight. I ain't gonna even lie. We about to cook over here tonight, Ratchet Gang. Are y'all ready? Oh, shit. Leash said, fuck this. Let me let me get my uh 50-piece on here. Uh, all the mods are dropping them 50-piece McNuggets. Hey, I appreciate y'all, man. Hold on. I'm feeling like I'm feeling like uh prime Jordan tonight. So we, we finna cook because we're going to get deep into this industry talk, man. Right before your eyes, you've been witnessing Taylor Swift and took Beyonce out the game. Let's just call it what it is, man. Taylor Swift has came in and this lady has knocked Beyonce right out of that queen spot. I don't give a damn if we got Beyonce fans in here tonight or not. It is what it is. Beyonce been th throwing shade her way every chance she's got let's just keep it a buck beyonce ain't happy about this beyonce ain't ain't cool with the fact that taylor swift is the is the face of the industry right now who is hotter than taylor swift let's just call it what it is who's hotter ratchet you're gonna upset the beehive man look the beehive gotta get mad if they if they gonna get mad but taylor swift running the game right now i mean 
The whole reason the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl is because of Taylor Swift. And I don't give a damn. You can say what you want, man. That shit was set up. It was, hey, I'm not even going to get into the whole conspiracy of the NFL. I'm not going to get too deep into that. I don't even really, I, I'm not going to even talk too much about it. But if you paid attention, you would have seen it coming. It was set up that way because of Taylor Swift. It was supposed to be Baltimore. It just it just so happened to be Kansas City because that's where her her alleged boyfriend played. Travis Kelsey don't even like chicks her type. Like this is whole this is a whole setup. I'm just I'm just calling it what it is. If you look at Travis Kelsey background and his that ain't Travis Kelsey speed. I'm just, yeah I'm just, he like the sisters. I'm just, he like a little a little chocolate. I'm I'm be real. I ain't, I ain't calling it. I ain't trying to start a you know what I'm saying whatever. I'm just letting y'all know. Travis Kelsey, he like him whoop de whoop de whoop. You know what I'm saying? Allegedly. But this was set up for the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. This was set up so Taylor Swift could take off. And the NFL is, she brought in a whole demographic for the NFL. Salute Jackie Martin on that 20-piece McNugget. I appreciate you for dropping another 20 salute. So they had Taylor Swift jump in the NFL and take over everything. Once she got that NFL fan base, it was over. Beyonce got, she has a huge fan base. Don't get me wrong. But Beyonce ain't Taylor Swift right now. But right about now, if you're paying attention, you'll already know that Jay-Z and Beyonce are overdue right now. Y'all been getting a whole bunch. We didn't gave y'all everything. And I ain't, I'm saying we. I'm just I'm speaking as if I was the industry right now. Why are we not past 300 likes yet? Come on, y'all. Get the likes up. If you're paying attention, it's, it's like, they didn't gave Beyonce and Jay Z the world and back. They're billionaires. This is the power couple, the it factor. This was supposed to be Jay Z and Aaliyah. Y'all remember this, right? Stay woke. This was supposed to be Jay Z and Aaliyah. Beyonce was so jealous of Aaliyah. They got, you know what I'm saying? And they ran Aaliyah up out of here. Dame Dash had to go. This was set up for Jay Z and Beyonce to take over the industry. Jay Z gets. All the clothing lines, the the restaurants, the uh, record labels. Uh, he got everything he wanted and more. They handed him the keys to the industry. <sighs> so after Jay-Z got keys to the industry, you know what I'm saying? And this was a power move. You got to I got to tell y'all the story because this is this is about getting Tupac and Biggie out the way. So eventually Suge Knight. Uh, can come to, come to forces with Irv Gotti, come to forces with Jay Prince, come to forces with uh, who else was it? it was Jay Prince? Uh, Diddy was the one who Diddy and Jay Z the ones who snitched on the deal, but Irv Gotti got shut down. Jay Prince got uh swooped in by the feds. Y'all know the whole history of the shit. I'm missing somebody because it's slipping my mind. But y'all know what the hell I'm talking about, man. This was set up for everybody to get out the way. And it was supposed to be a power move on some people. But Jay-Z and Diddy were the ones who snitched this power deal out. The, you know what I'm saying? They the ones who snitched on everybody. So if you look, look at all the shit Diddy been doing. Look at everything Diddy has. Diddy's also, uh, well, I don't know if he's a billionaire, but Diddy damn near, he real close if he ain't. But Jay-Z, he's a billionaire. You got to look. They gave Jay-Z, uh, they gave Jay-Z the world. They gave Diddy the world. Diddy just chose to go out and play naked basketball with, uh, with with a whole bunch of men and do a whole bunch of weird freak off shit. He did, that's what he decided to do with his shit. Jay Z bossed the fuck up and took over the industry. Got his lady and him and his lady been supposed to take over the industry, but they have yet to make a huge sacrifice yet. These people they have they have not made a huge sacrifice yet. Yeah, they did what they did. They didn't pay some dudes in the industry, but Beyonce. You're not going down the, the goat. They fixing to let Taylor Swift pass you up unless you you, you got to offer up something. Because it's looking like you and Jay-Z might not last. I'm going to be real. One of y'all going to have to go. Jay-Z or Beyonce? I don't know, man. Y'all let me know in the chat what y'all thinking, man. This, this shit going to get loose tonight. I got some videos I, I want to uh, chop it up about. Because Sloan Bella did a reading last night on the... um. On, on, on a situation, I want. I just want to get into some shit about about Jamie Foxx that she said. Because Sloan Bella said has some interesting shit, interesting shit to say about. Uh, I, did I say Jamie Foxx. I mean Jay Z. Y'all know what the hell I'm talking about. I was trying to pull this video up. All right, salute to who is this? Salute to Capri. I appreciate you. Says hello. I am a new subscriber. I appreciate you for being a new subscriber. 
And I appreciate you for that five piece. I appreciate you. Salute, 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 and welcome to Ratchet Game. <clears throat> All right. So I'm fixing to share my screen. Damn, I didn't even share my screen. All right, hold on. All right, give me a second, y'all. I'm slipping today. You know, you take a night off, man. It just get loose. You take a night off, it just starts to get loose. All right, so let's look at this video right here. Let's chop it up about this. Energy of this person's empire <clears throat> is slowly collapsing. Now, when you look at a person's empire or what they produce or what they create, that extends to family members and everybody down the line, okay? So systematically, which is really interesting because what I get is this particular person who has acquired probably was the first hip hop billionaire in 2019, so they say, um, has acquired so much wealth and power over the masses along with his very famous wife. And when you look at it, they're very famous children because of course, when the parents are celebrities, the children come into play. Um, in so I'm gonna stop it right there. Obviously that she's talking about Jay-Z and Beyonce. Sloan Billis says Jay-Z and Beyonce's downfall is coming. She says we're going to be able to see it one day. It ain't going to be no time. She ain't saying it's happening today, tomorrow, whoop -de -whoop, but the, the end is near. And I'm telling you right now, it's over for Beyonce. It, Taylor Swift is, is here. She not going to be able to knock Taylor Swift out this box now. Taylor Swift can't sing for shit. She ain't talented at all, but this is just the chosen one. It don't even matter. If you look up a long list of a, a bunch of R&B singers, hell, none of them are really that talented. None of them can sing. Hell, none of them even write their own damn music. This is a industry controlled. It's heavily industry controlled. You're not getting no power and you're not getting no real money if you're not if you're not uh, copping out. I'm just being real. If you if you playing the game with them in some way, shape, form, or fashion, then yeah, you you'll be able to make some money and sustain a nice lifestyle in the industry. But you got to play ball, literally. Let's get to it. In the public eye, but this particular. <laughs> person is winding down energetically and i see a complete brick wall shut right in front of this person three years so we are in 2024 this is whatever month this is this is march at <laughs> the beginning of 2024 so we are headed for the next three years 25 26 and 27 with the beginning initial stages of the knockdown when it comes to jay-z he is not next in line he is second to next in line I get a real, real kind of focus between him, Chris Brown, and MC Hammer, okay? So they're kind of all coming around, and they're all linked. We know P. Diddy's going down. So MC Hammer, Chris Brown, Jay-Z, and Diddy. That's an interesting, that's an interesting four that you throw out there. But we got to say, Sloan Bella has been very, very credible. It's March, and she said in March, look at Diddy. <laughs> All I'm saying is she told us in March 2024, pay attention to Diddy. Look in March 2024. Look how we looking at Diddy today. That shit just happened at the end of February, right in the right in the, at the cusp of March on a leap year. So she was almost there. She almost she was right on the money. She was right there, right, in, right on the money. And there's still some more shit to come. So she said, March, we still got the whole march to see what's going on with Diddy. So she also saying Jay-Z, MC Hammer, Chris Brown. I, I say that she's credible. I'm paying attention to what she's talking about. I ain't, she ain't missed yet. I ain't seen her miss yet. Him, Chris Brown, and MC Hammer, okay? So they're kind of all coming around and they're all linked. We know P. Diddy's going down. So, and that was said by his ex-wife and that video I did last June. But Jay-Z is a different story because he's still attached to a hierarchy which encompasses financial, political, and just basically public. So he's not absolutely going to be taken down yet. The next three years, yes, there are steps where if he doesn't fall into line, he is going to be shaken up. Now, what I do see, I do see three years from now, him, his wife, and his kid, I don't know if there's more than one kid. There might be more than one kid. I can't remember with everybody who has kids. But 
Anyway, him, his kid, and his wife, I see them with suitcases, and I literally see them leaving. So their residence will no longer be in the United States. This is what I'm seeing. And this happens by 2027, if not sooner, 2025 through 2027. There is a leaving of the energy here, and there is a flipping of his personality. So what I'm seeing is a complete shift in his personality. So what does that mean? It means that on a representative way, so how I present myself outwardly, this changes. So now I change my tune, put on another mask, and I present myself outwardly in a different fashion. He thinks he can escape by doing that. If I present myself this way, the public will see me this way. So do y'all feel like Jay-Z finna end up dipping? I'm gonna be real. I've been seeing him and Beyonce look a re real iffy. He's even begging the public to give Beyonce a Grammy. They mad at Taylor Swift because Taylor Swift taking off. Taylor Swift getting nominated for everything and winning. She didn't won more Grammys than Beyonce. Beyonce, she, or whatever, you know, she's she been nominated hella times. This lady is, she is the face of everything you could think of. They just got Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift. He like, man, come on, why, why Beyonce can't win album of the year, man? Come on, man, give Beyonce album of the year. Can Beyonce get out? They mad because Taylor Swift is, is, is killing the game right now, and Beyonce is losing the hold on the industry. Beyonce then tried her hardest with Lemonade. That was, and then here comes Taylor. Taylor Swift. I mean, I don't believe she's very talented. She can't sing for shit to me, but this is the chosen one, Beyonce. You got to make a sacrifice. She didn't got with Travis Kelsey, the most popular player in the NFL, and he's the he's one of the most average tight ends, but just you know, comes out on top. This is all scripted. This is supposed to happen. Y'all better stay woke, man. This everything that you know, that's why they call it the entertainment industry. This is entertainment. WWE entertainment, NFL entertainment, NBA entertainment. You got to know everything has to work in the in, in the boss's favor. If it ain't going to make me the most money, then I might not want this to happen. Do you think the Cleveland Browns going back winning back-to-back -back Super Bowls makes the NFL a lot of money? Fuck no. But the Kansas City Chiefs, fuck yeah. You get uh, Patrick Mahomes and Travis. Stay woke on this shit, man. The industry is scripted, but we're going to get back to this shit. Let's let's continue, y'all. Let's stay focused. And nothing will happen to me. Now, he's definitely 100%, 100% energetically connected to the different hierarchies on the other side. So this man understands metaphysical principles, occult principles, how to use those principles, and how to move through mm -hmm. different layers of energy himself. No questions asked. The reason that he is in the music industry is because of his finely tuned ability to walk a line between what you and I see and where they go, which is different, which is why they have a different lifestyle than us. It's not because they're better or more creative. Understand what you're looking at when you see somebody like Jay-Z is somebody who took an opportunity, Saturn in Taurus, okay, retrograde. Somebody who took an opportunity to step out of a comfort zone and into one that they thought, and this is a greed level. I want fame. I want success. I want money. It's not just I'm a businessman. And he is using his queen, which is Queen B, Beyonce, to help him maneuver in that fashion. But it's interesting because what I see is the wax is melting on the candle. So that tells me something as I'm saying it that these two engage in ritual expression involved with fire candle, candle magic, which is really kind of novice. Like, And everybody knows Beyonce practices witchcraft. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Salute to Lisa Marie. Says, salute, buddy. I'd be happy to see Sexy Red. <laughs> Damn, salute, Elisa. I appreciate you, Lisa Marie. Salute on that five piece. I appreciate you. But the downfall is coming. They say he's he trying to use Beyonce right now. Hold on, thugs. Let's get back and to I'm this. I'm saying it, that these two engage in ritual expression involved with fire candle, candle magic, which is really kind of novice. Like, there's higher levels. Candle magic is a novice beginner way to manipulate energy, but I'm seeing them melt like wax candles. So the facade that they both have and that their family has is actually crumbling right now. You will see it within three years. There are legal troubles for Jay-Z that come up in November and they come attached to another person, but not a person that you actually think, which would be P. Diddy, 
spilling the beans as he gets dragged into court. No, it's not P. Diddy. It is somebody else. And I'm kind of swinging around to Justin Bieber. Like I'm looking at this, the people up there and I'm kind of torn between Chris Brown and Justin Bieber. But I'm going the Justin Bieber way here because Bieber is involved in this sideways. Okay, so there's a sideways connection to Bieber, which I'm sure they're all in the industry, different forms of expression. And if you think about Bieber, Bieber was supposed to be at the Super Bowl with Usher, who was the one who, uh, uh, you know, the 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 word we don't want to use over here, you know, it rhymes with broom. You know, he did that to him. Bieber also got sent up to Diddy, which made him completely uncomfortable. You could tell whatever happened between Diddy and Justin Bieber when Bieber was a kid. Remember when Diddy pulled back up on him years later? He's like, yo, what's up, man? Why you ain't been picking your phone up? Why you ain't you changing your number? What's up? Oh, man, man, man. Uh, 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 yeah, man. Uh, my team did this and I'll give you my new number. He was really, he didn't even want nothing to do with Diddy. Fast forward, Diddy sent Usher up there to do this. Half, hey, you got to do this halftime show, man. Yeah, I need somebody on my, around me to make me look good. Usher, he went out to go do his thing at the Super Bowl. Now you got Beyonce saying she got an album coming out, but that's in, that's out of spite because of Taylor Swift. Man, it's a whole bunch of shit in this industry going on. It's a lot of cover-ups happening right now. Chris Brown does play a part in a lot of shit because, you know, Chris Brown been here. He has seen a lot of stuff. Justin Bieber has seen a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm just saying, man, this industry is about to come crashing down. You're going to start seeing everybody get exposed because Justin Bieber turned down the Super Bowl thing. He turned it down. He Usher hit him up and said, you know, hey, you, I, I, I basically raised you into this game, man. Hey, it's only right. You pop out to the, with this Super Bowl and we do this together, man. And they said Bieber said he, he wanted nothing to do with Usher or that Super Bowl. They said Bieber didn't want nothing to do with this. He getting the hell away from these people. He man, you can tell he regret a lot of stuff. He, he it seems like he's using, he's using to cope with whatever the fuck they did to him when he was younger. Because Bieber don't, it, it's like he don't fuck with these people. Let's let's get back to it. Now what I am seeing is Jay Z's beginning. Okay, so the succession of being unraveled in the next three years starts with a burglary of something. So Jay-Z is in the process of having some connection to missing burglarized items, and it's going to come up around him. That's the first marker. And I'm not sure what it is he steals. I don't know if this is a stolen song, a stolen item, a stolen car. I don't know what it is. But it is a burglary of something I have stolen, and now I'm being accused of taking this. And that is the beginning of it because they will start nosing around with him. So there's like a lot of nosing around. It's in the theft of something. And by theft, I don't quite know what I mean by that, but it's by the theft of something. And when you, when you look at that, it just draws attention to him and they don't like attention drawn to them. I also feel, forgive me for saying this, I sound really weird, but I also feel that when they sleep at night, they sleep in coffins. Boy, damn. And I'm going to be real. Everybody in the industry allegedly knows that allegedly Beyonce is deeply into witchcraft. And they say Beyonce is a witch, allegedly. This, this is what people say in the industry. I don't know, man. There's been some people that came out and said Beyonce is a witch. And Jay-Z definitely uh, is a... Uh, an alleged Satanist, allegedly. Salute Antoinette Young on that 50 piece McNugget. Is everybody throwing 50 pieces up tonight? Is everybody in this motherfucker throwing 50 pieces up tonight? Salute. I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all is showing the hell out tonight. Let's get back to it, gang. So, what do I mean by that? They sleep not like you and I. They sleep in a different way and they don't sleep till we get up. So, there's a whole other shift in energy. If you were to get, they're like underground. Maybe that's what I want to say. It's an underground energy that is not observed by most people on this planet so the behavior is beneath the surface and why haven't we passed 500 likes yet i need everybody in this building right now to go ahead and smash that like button smash that like button y'all let's go and that is part of 
what is going to be their unraveling. It's very weird energy, and I'm on like all over the place again. But that is going to be the unraveling, is that they are connected energetically to a different source. And I see them connected through the solar plexus. So they hang, okay, so hang, like from the stomach, hang, like when you rise up out of the body, meaning they're not presently grounded in their physical body. So she's saying they on some other shit. Jackie Martin, I appreciate you for that 10-piece salute. We five away from 400 already. Let's get to it. So I'm just saying, man, I, I do believe that Beyonce and Jay-Z are on some extra shit. And when I say extra I think they do t dabble in with the with the other side, and I, I I'm, when I say the other side, I'm talking about the side that we don't. Well, I I would hope we don't. You know, well not we. I hope y'all don't. Shit, I hope y'all don't be fucking with the other side. But when I I'm talking about man, look, this is some spiritual shit, and I don't know who what side y'all on, but I'm definitely with God. So let's continue. I'm talking Jay Z, um, not Brown, but of course his wife, because the two are synonymous. But through the solar plexus and so puppeteered out like that. So the behavior of them is completely controlled and it's going to start unraveling. We give them way too much power. They're controlled by other entities around them. There is something with Justin Bieber coming up that's going to drag Jay-Z down the rabbit hole with him. And I agree with that. I think Jay-Z is going to come tumbling down with Diddy. Salute K. Lauren Lee on that five piece. I appreciate you. Salute, salute, salute. I think Jay-Z is going to come tumbling down with Diddy. But it, his ain't going to happen just like Diddy because Jay-Z got a lot of people protecting him and he's still making a lot of people a lot of money. You got to think about this. Diddy ain't making nobody no money nowhere. Diddy was just a face of other shit. He was just making other people look good by using his likeness. Diddy wasn't really on no business shit. He was just trying to get freaky in the industry. Let's just call it what it is. Diddy was out here trying to get freaky. So we have this connection like this, and it's going to go down, down, down. It's more of a procuring issue rather than, like, um, fundamentally hands-on issue. So it's more profiteering than it is hands-on, is how I would word that. Said that, I get Jay-Z connected to Clive Davis, connected to P. Diddy, and so there's a succession of things happening. Clive is old, right? You see? I told y'all Clive in the mix. But the reason why Diddy got exposed is because of that deal that Clive Davis put him on to, and Diddy tried to turn his back on Clive and tried to snake him out of a deal. That's why Diddy and Clive Davis ain't seeing eye to eye, but Jay-Z is right in this tree, too. Jay-Z is in the same tree as Diddy with this Clive Davis shit. Because you remember, Jay-Z and Diddy came into the industry a, a long time ago. And they, man, Jay-Z been getting down. If y'all think Jay-Z wasn't loose in the 80s and 90s, man, y'all sick. Jay-Z been getting down. Now, so he's probably next in line. But I'm kind of shooting off with Chris Brown. And then I'm shooting off Clive, how I would word that. Said that, I get Jay-Z connected to Clive Davis, connected to P. Diddy, and so there's a succession of things happening. Clive is old right now, so he's probably next in line, but I'm kind of shooting off with Chris Brown, and then I'm shooting off with Justin Bieber, and then I'm kind of going to MC Hammer. Like, and I, I'm, I'm not understanding the MC Hammer part, but hey, I'm a ride with her on this. I ain't seen her be wrong yet. But I seen somebody mention Ray J. You remember Ray J came under the same umbrella, uh, like with the Chris Stokes camp, Marcus Houston's, and you know what I'm saying? He came with that camp. It, it, it's all camps. You remember you gotta you gotta think about what camp people came with. It, it was a so so deaf camp, and they, they had a lot of youngins too. It was the, it was the bad boy camp. They had a lot of youngins over there. It was it was few camps in the industry. And what camp did you come from? Chris Stokes had had all the, you know what I'm saying, the young boys too. Like it was a whole bunch of camps. Africa Bambada had had his people. It was a, it was always camps in the industry and they always have done this with the younger generation, bro. Y'all, it's just been right underneath your nose and you just haven't peeped it, but it's been right in your face the whole time. It's been right in your face the whole time, man. How they've been doing these young kids in the industry, allegedly. Shooting off with Chris Brown and then I'm shooting off with Justin Bieber, and then I'm kind of going to MC Hammer. Like, it's happening. These people, these people are being used on different levels to 
take other people's money, clean it, move things all about the country under the guise, under the guise of their creative talents. Now, Jay-Z, this is going to come to a screeching halt. Screeching halt. Russell Simmons pops up in the conversation, okay, in the conversation. You got to know Russell Simmons, he took flight. Russell Simmons got the fuck from around here. Remember, he relocated. He ain't in America no more. I don't remember where he is, but he ain't. he's somewhere where they can't fuck with him from what I heard. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it's loose. He went somewhere and he made sure that whatever popped up with his name, he ain't coming back. He he went somewhere. He, his ass, you ain't going to never see Russell Simmons out here. I, I doubt very seriously you will ever see him walking around New York or some shit again. It's over for him. Jay-Z is going to be in the same boat. Diddy, everybody about to get exposed, man. There ain't going to be nothing they're going to be able to do within five to ten years. Everything going to be out about everybody. And you know why? Because of those Epstein documents, allegedly. And, you know, they, they definitely uh are trying to sweep that under the rug i posted some shit about that on instagram and they yeah, they, they don't like just they don't like that they don't want you talking about that so yeah we're not talking about that i'm just saying allegedly so i have not heard head nor tail of russell simmons he pops right in right now for months i mean he went off somewhere and who the hell knows where he went those words that hiding will come to play in the future months, we're going to see conversation from Russell Simmons. It's either behind the scenes, it's something that is going to bring about a change in how the public looks at Jay-Z. There's like all kinds of things going on. He has a target directed at him because people want him found out. Beyonce does as well. This is what they're doing changing the candle wax upping the game upping the ante the energy is very very odd but this is what i feel so to another weird energy when i'm looking okay when i'm looking at the children of a lot of celebrity people i realize that these are i'll use the word synthetics but they act synthetic i'm not saying they're not human i'm just saying synthetically inclined i can't read the energy and if i can't read the energy as a barometer if i can't look at you in the eyes and read your energy and see what you're doing then there is something that is blocking me from doing so and now it can be a block by them but it can also be because they come from a different origin source okay so what they've done in our society is they've gotten us so used to in vitro and having babies and test tubes do we really know if someone chooses to do that in a higher echelon, the elite, as they call them, in a higher echelon, do we really know exactly what is going to happen with those creations? And I'm going to stop it right there. And I'm going to ask y'all this. Have y'all ever noticed in the industry, it seems like when somebody gets pregnant, is it just me or do they have their baby awfully fast and their kids grow up just like right before our eyes? It's like, it's like, damn, is it has it been that long? God damn. Like, I don't I can't be the only one who've been noticing like some of these kids, it's like, come on, bro. Like, ain't no way in hell. Wasn't she just pregnant like three months ago? And, and the baby here, and, and no one ever says and it's like, Oh my god, the baby's so beautiful. And it's like that bitch wasn't but how the Oh, okay. And then they be on baby number two. Then baby number three is like, damn, it's been five minutes y'all been together. Y'all already got three kids and been married seven years. Damn, oh, you know, I, I, none of my business. But I, like I told you, the world is a stage, man. Some of these babies don't even be in them. They just, and you don't even know because they're, the technology is so good. And I know I'm going to sound crazy, but you don't even know if they're morphing stuff and doing things with cells and we don't know what the fuck is going on in this world. We don't know what they're doing in these laboratories or what the fuck creations is out there. You just want to be shallow-minded and be like, man, come on, man. Ain't no way in hell. Y'all just conspiracy theory. You got to know it's some sick motherfuckers in this world. There's somebody in a laboratory right now creating some shit they probably shouldn't be. Just be real, y'all. Come on. It, it, it's some fucked up people out here. It's somebody in a lab somewhere by themselves doing some shit they shouldn't be doing and it's, it's more than one person it's a lot of people doing some shit right now they shouldn't they ain't got no damn business doing let's just stay woke on this y'all because we don't and jay-z and beyonce are 
kind of at that level where we're not really sure where that energy came from, whatever it's blocked. Now, and, and here's what I'm getting. I am getting both Jay-Z and Beyonce because see, he procures her out there. He is her handler and he is the one that pushes her out there public and then he profits off her. So we're looking at, and I don't care how much talent you think they have. I don't care how much talent you think they have. She was chosen for him. It is a karmic thing looking at their chart, but he was, she was chosen for him in order to help him get where he needed to go. So she's the muse, but let's use this in a different way. Sometimes we use the word muse in the terms of profiteering off of it. He's very aware of entertainers, male and female, where he needs to go to keep his money coming in and what he's actually selling. Now this connects him to R. Kelly, high level pimping and pandering for the music industry through the trafficking. And yeah, you got to know all of these producers and record executives were trafficking and do they were all doing it. Let's just stop the bullshit. And they were all doing it. And it, it was cool for it. That's why a lot of people, they so hush hush about it because they were doing it too. You know, so you see a lot of these people don't even speak up or say nothing about it because they were all doing it. You know what I'm saying? It, it, this is something that everybody was doing in the industry, bringing in the young whoopy whoops and doing whatever the fuck you would be. Puffy's flavor camp and oh, we got this camp over here. They have been using their their stardom and their power to mold and manipulate everybody. Mamas, daddies, paying people off. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Corrupt police and all type of shit, man. And they've been using the fact that they're stars to get away with trafficking and doing a lot of shit that, you know what I'm saying? This is this has been going on, y'all. Selling. Now this connects them to R. Kelly. High level pimping and pandering for the music industry through the trafficking. My camera cut off when I said trafficking. Through the trafficking of human beings okay so i'm going to put that out there in that fashion you we you me them we are going to start seeing through the veil when it comes to jay-z and within three years public favor is removed now he's not the first one to go down behind p diddy but he's a close second so it's a combination that's coming after him and when they take him down they're going to take beyonce down behind him and it's going to start crumbling, okay? So it's the next three years. And they've already started to turn their back on Beyonce. They they ushered in Taylor Swift. They don't even give a damn what's going on. They just threw Taylor Swift out there like, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, give us somebody. It's just no longer Beyonce. Jay-Z is losing his grip on the industry. Everybody, Diddy don't got no more power, no more control. Nobody don't even want to, nobody want to sit next to him. Remember, I was the one telling you, Diddy wasn't going to be at them damn Grammys. I told y'all nobody wanted to be around Diddy. It, it's bad for business right now. Nobody can stand next to Diddy right now. You see no one in the industry other than Floyd Mayweather has said a damn good word about Diddy. And you all know why Floyd Mayweather did it. You know, Floyd Mayweather been sold out. But, hey, it is what it is. Another entertainer. He's a great entertainer. Great. One of the greatest. Uh, but he was ducking that smoke with Pacquiao in his prime. Now, I'm going to be real. He was ducking that shit. Pacquiao's going to whoop his ass. But we are going to continue. Let's look into this Jay-Z and Beyonce situation. Every time I cover this Jay-Z and Beyonce situation, we go up. I'm going to be real. We be having some good Jay-Z and Beyonce topics over here. Dude, there's nothing compared to what you've done. And not only me, but everybody here. You taught me so many things. I was 20 years old when we first started dating. You taught me how to be a woman. You taught that just sounds cringe. We were I was 20 years old when we first started dating. You taught me how to be a woman. And and he's just looking on like keep talking. Come on. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking with with a, a see through blouse on. Let's get it. You taught me so many things. I was 20 years old when we first started dating. You taught me how to be a woman. You taught me how to live. You taught me how to be a friend. Um, you've given me so much in life. And this is it's not enough. It's not enough I can give you. I just want you to be happy. 
and every year I'm even more in love with you. And I was what makes it even more weird is at this point he was doing nothing but cheating on her. Like that's the that's the craziest part about this. What makes it even more cringe? How did this man teach you how to be a woman? You know what? I don't even want to know how he taught you how to be a woman. But your mama should have taught you how to be a woman. You, you, I thought your parents was in your life. You had both parents in your life, and it was Jay Z who taught you how to be a woman. I'm I'm kind of I don't know. It's been every day of my life. Every year. I'm even more in love with you. And I want to spend every day of my life with you. Happy birthday. And I thank God for you every day. My fate was groomed and is absolutely nothing anybody can say to make me change my mind. She was 19. He was 31. Um, How freaking gross. Talking about you made me the woman that I am. Uh, Your mother made you. The woman that you are. What made you the woman that you are with that man that was fucking on other O's? When you was a child. Up until you was a grown ass woman. Like grown grown. And you had to make lemonade about it. I still love my girl. But she was groomed. Man. 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 And Beyonce looked terrified in this. It just looked. It didn't look authentic. It just looked like she was. Told to do that. She looked scared and terrified for her life at that moment. Beyonce may end up turning on Jay-Z in order to save herself and her career. She going to have to give up something major. And if Beyonce give up that Jay-Z connect, you know what I'm saying? It, it's going to be it's going to be trouble. But Usher is already, you know what I'm saying, throwing some shade at Beyonce. This industry just going to get messy. Everybody about to start telling everybody secrets. Let's get to it, y'all. You're going to hate me for this one. Oh. Jay Z, Pharrell, Diddy. Damn, Usher! Club Shay Shay's podcast is turning into this go to spot for artists spilling the tea, and Usher just spilled a whole pot. He dished on the supposed shady stuff about Jay Z and Diddy, spilling the survival secrets. But hold up, he didn't stop there. Apparently, there's an even bigger mystery than Jay Z and Diddy, and he's pointing fingers at none other than Queen Bey herself, Beyonce. Yeah, Usher went there, talking about some next level enigma with Mrs. Carter. A bit of a reckless state for me because I think some of the actions that I've taken, some of the decisions that I made, began to sabotage me. And it may have been personal sabotage because I just wanted some idea. This and uh, it seems like Usher kind of, you know what I'm saying, having some regrets and he trying to get out of that shit that he was in. You got to pay attention to Usher too, man. Usher got a lot to do with this because, man, Usher got, he had some documents, he, he had some court documents. It, the truth's going to start coming out about him, too. He didn't did a lot of shit in this industry. You know, he was taught at a young age. You remember he went off at 12, 13 years old, 14, how much, however old he was, to go to Puffy's Flavor Camp and experience the freak-offs. This week, Usher spilled some behind-the-scenes beans on Club Shay Shay, the podcast hosted by the former football champ, Shannon Sharp. Sharp went in with the tough questions, asking Usher if he ever passed up on a collaboration and later regretted it. Usher's response? Hold on to your hat. You gonna hate me for this one, he said. Jay-Z, Farrell, Diddy, and me were supposed to be a group. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't say, no. I didn't say, yeah. I think that we just got caught up. We all got caught up in the moment. We were talking about it and having secret meetings about it. Usher went on to share more on the what could have been saga. We were talking about music and how we were gonna flip it and the business side of things. Somehow we just got distracted and it never happened. And you got to think, but why is everybody sitting on Shannon Sharp couch giving all the industry tea and they giving everything, everybody going to Shannon Sharp? You think this is a coincidence? There ain't no such thing as a coincidence. Everybody going to Shannon Sharp for a reason. Did y'all see Shannon Sharp pop out the car today? They say he was looking like Miss Nettie. Now, Shannon Sharp, that man loose, too. It's been real loose with Shannon Sharp. I don't know too many uh, men, six, eight. 270 or some shit, the 250 walking around with a little Paul Moraney and puppy. And so, I don't, man, I don't know, Shannon. I don't know, Uncle Shay. You, Uncle Shay, kind of loose. That's one that I actually wish would have happened. While Usher has collaborated individually with Diddy, Jay Z, and Farrell, the epic foursome never joined forces to drop a track together. Back in 2002, Usher teamed up with Diddy on the chart topping Billboard single I Need a Girl Part. One, the collaboration continued as Usher joined the Bad Boy Records founder on Better on the Other Side, a heartfelt tribute to the late Michael Jackson. Fast forward a few years, and Usher found himself in the studio with both Jay-Z and Beyonce for his fourth studio album, Here I Stand. 
Jay-Z dropped a verse on Best Thing, while Beyonce lent her vocals to the remix of Love in This Club. And let's not forget Usher's 2012 Lookin' For Myself album, where Farrell jumped on the track Twist It. Absolutely, Farrell and Jay-Z have both dipped their toes into the supergroup scene. Farrell joined for... And ain't it crazy that all of the shit is coming out about these people and for real come on brother we we could look and we could look at you and tell exactly your situation so i mean hey i don't think that, that's gonna be a surprise to anybody when your shit comes out but it, it's been some things about you coming out behind the scenes too so usher diddy jay-z beyonce all of these people in the same pot man they all doing the same shit this is with lupe fiasco and kanye west to create child rebel soldier back in the 2000s meanwhile jay-z had his stint in the new york-based collective murder inc alongside jay rule and dmx however maybe that's when usher was exposed to the real face of beyonce usher shared a charming anecdote about meeting beyonce back in the day when she was part of the girl group the dolls Managed by Daryl Simmons, a producer and songwriter who collaborated with Usher, the Dolls visited Atlanta for the first time. Usher, being the responsible teenager, was asked to look after them. Wait. Usher was Beyonce's nanny? So Usher was Beyonce's nanny. So they left it. The, so we all know what, what they taught him when he was young. So they, oh, you, you need to stay with Usher. Oh, man, this shit just, it just gets even more cringe back in the day when she was part of the girl group DMX. However, maybe that's when Usher was exposed to the real face of Beyonce. Usher shared a charming anecdote about meeting Beyonce back in the day when she was part of the girl group The Dolls. Managed by Daryl Simmons, a producer and songwriter who collaborated with Usher, The Dolls visited Atlanta for the first time. Usher, being the responsible teenager, was asked to look after them. I think I looked over them while they were doing something in the house. I had to watch over because I was like the, you know, the authority because I guess I was the teenager at the time. Usher I think I looked, you think, I, I think I looked over them while they were doing something in the house. What the fuck you mean while they were doing something in the house? I had to watch over because I was like the, you know, the authority because I guess I was the teenager at the time, Usher said. Usher, man, they should not have left you with no damn kids. I'm going to be real with you, Usher. The teenager at the time, Usher explained. He clarified that he wasn't a nanny or a manny, but more of a chaperone, ensuring they stayed out of trouble. Refle so they left these kids with Usher, who learned from Diddy and Freak Offs at that age. At this age, the Usher had already just got done experimenting with Diddy. And being in the industry with Diddy, so what you think they left them with? Oh, man, come on. Reflecting on those early days, Usher admitted he didn't foresee Beyonce's global stardom, but he noticed her unique talent and brightness. He expressed genuine excitement for her incredible success, describing it as really great for my sister to see that she's done so amazing and continue to thrive and just get bigger and better. Usher and Beyonce's bond extends beyond mere professional collaboration. It's a testament to a genuine friendship cultivated over the years. Their history is peppered with joint projects and mutual support, showcasing a camaraderie that goes beyond the spotlight. In 2003, Usher took the lead in Beyonce's Naughty Girl music video, revealing not just their professional chemistry, but also their impressive dancing skills. The duo continued to captivate audiences in 2008 when they delivered a powerhouse duet of Love in This Club Part 2 at the BET Awards, leaving the crowd in awe of their vocal prowess and stage charisma. Usher hasn't shied away from expressing his admiration for Beyonce, acknowledging her profound impact on the music industry, cultural landscape, and her philanthropic endeavors. Beyond the glitz and glamour he sees her as a dedicated mother of three ushers repeated affirmations of their bond labeling her as his sister underscore the depth of their man 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 let's get to part two of it it's just it's loose man everybody coming up in this shit man and and it all go back to this childhood stuff man i'm telling you pay attention to what was going on with these kids when they was younger see nobody nobody even knew that that usher was out there babysitting uh beyonce when she was a kid in another group managed by some other creepy dude. Man, this stuff is just loose in this industry, man. However, now it looks like Beyonce's alleged evil actions has stopped him taking her side. In recent years, there has been ongoing speculation about the reasons behind Lauren Hill's disappearance. While some have previously suggested that she may have struggled with addiction or mental health issues, a recent disclosure from Lauren Hill herself suggests a different narrative. According to her, it appears that her career decline was orchestrated by her closest friend and collaborator, Beyonce. Young people know that it is, uh, it is not a burden to love him and to represent him. Lauren Hill's rise to stardom was rapid, 
achieving milestones that continue to pose a challenge for contemporary rap artists to surpass, even two decades after her breakthrough. However, the perplexing aspect lies in the swift decline of her career after the release of just one album, considering her immense potential to accomplish even greater feats. So I realized that until you conquer the enemy in yourself, you can't deal with anyone. Back in the past, about 15 years ago, the starlight of a 23-year-old Lauryn Hill reached its zenith as she unveiled what would ultimately stand as her defining musical legacy. Prior to this, she had soared to fame as a member of the hip-hop trio The Fugees, alongside fellow artists Wyclef Jean and Praz. I mean, uh, Lauren Hill, there's a reason why she ain't around. She don't even want to drop no damn music. She don't want to be in this damn industry with these evil, demonic people. And I don't blame her. I mean, you shouldn't want to be in this shit either. There's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of money and a lot of temptations in that lifestyle. But she didn't want to be no part of that shit. Her solo album, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, followed, becoming a phenomenon with its multi-platinum sales and securing five Grammy Awards for the exceptionally talented singer-rapper. Breaking the record for the most Grammy wins of all time. Be on standing and show your respect. It's Renaissance. Beyonce. These achievements etched her name in history as the first female artist to earn multiple Grammy nominations and wins in a single night, while her album also marked the first hip-hop-themed work to seize the prestigious Album of the Year Grammy. What I mean is like, you know... It have to stay firm. Curiously, during the very year of Lauren's solo album introduction, another significant talent began to make waves in the pop realm. A 16-year-old artist who would eventually go by her first name alone, Beyonce, stepped onto the scene with Destiny's Child and their self-titled debut album. Intriguingly, there exists a subtle one-degree connection between these two icons. Destiny's Child collaborated with Wyclef on their track, No No No, marking the release of their first successful single that ascended to the summit of R&B charts. Breaking the record for the most Grammy wins of all time. Be outstanding and show your respect. It's Renaissance. Beyonce. In retrospect, a closely intertwined narrative unfolds. As one star's trajectory faltered, another soared. The focal point, Lauren Hill, reportedly declined a lead role in the Hollywood production Charlie's Angels, aligning herself with a specific brand of feminism. Reflecting on this decision in an interview, Hill remarked, Men like it when you sing to them, but step out and try and control things, and there are doubts. This is a very sexist industry. They'll never throw the genius's title to a sister. And you got to understand, they didn't want nobody like this. You you think they wanted this type of talk from a female in the industry? No, 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 no. Where's Glorilla? Uh, fuck nigga free. Uh, the, where's Sexy Red? Ice Spice to my shaking ass in the deli? I, come on, man. They, they don't want no girls spitting no knowledge. They want you uh, shaking your ass. Just go shake it and, and tell you, yeah, lead them to the strip club. Don't lead them to them books. They do not want them reading books. They want them in the strip club. Keep it a buck. Interestingly, Lauren Hill's initial taste of success came through acting. In 1991, she made her debut alongside Jean in a hip-hop adaptation of Shakespeare's Twelfth Night titled Club Thetan. Recognizing her potential, a talent agent discovered Hill and secured her a role on the soap opera As the World Turns. Subsequently, she graced the screen in Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit, earning praise from film critic Roger Ebert, who lamented that her remarkable talent was underutilized. Hill's acting journey also led her to Steven Soderbergh's King of the Hill. Oh, I just been thinking about things. My mother thinks singing is dead in. Gradually, the weight of celebrity began to take its toll on Hill. Her days became a whirlwind of tours, film projects, and music production, with even the simple act of shopping tainted by the constant presence of paparazzi. In response, she parted ways with her managers, withdrew from the public eye, and embraced a new routine centered around Bible study sessions. These classes, held five days a week and led by a figure known as Brother Anthony, left a profound impact on her. Salute Lauren for that 10 piece on Cash App. I appreciate you, Lauren. Salute. Reflecting on this period, Proz would later tell Rolling Stone in 2003, I had a tape of his teachings. That is ill. F me up. I can't really explain it. It was some weird man. It was some real cult. Yeah, I bet it was some cult shit going on, man. It's always some cult shit in this industry. Y'all ready for part three of that? Now, this story taking all type of twists and turns. It's, it's talking about everybody in the industry because you got. I've been trying to tell y'all over and over everything is connected in the industry it's all one big game man they all playing one big game and they all under the same umbrella you just got to figure out who connected to who 
In stark contrast, the other luminary Beyonce and her groupmates contributed the empowering anthem Independent Women Part 1 to the film's soundtrack. As events unfolded, one star appeared to fade from the media spotlight while the other continued to dazzle across various publications, gracing the pages of Sports Illustrated, Vogue, GQ, and even the feminist magazine Miss One Luminary exhibited a gift for lyrics, seamlessly blending rap and melody to explore topics like politics, love, religion, and challenging the influence of corporate media. In contrast, the other gravitated towards more surface-level pursuits, centering her attention on nightlife revelry, projecting an image of glamour, and celebrating her financial independence as she navigated heartaches and fleeting romances. These people are so brainwashed. You get up in the morning, you click on the computer, you see all these pictures, and it's uh, all you think of is the picture and the image that you see. Subsequently, it came to light that the song featured in Charlie's Angels had been passed on to Beyonce after she declined the film role. However, Beyonce's standing in the music industry hasn't been without its controversies. She's been associated with a willingness to trade artistic integrity for opportunities and recognition. Historically, Beyonce has been observed to readily accept offers purely for the allure of monetary gain and celebrity status. This pattern seems to have persisted in her decision to take on this particular song. At the time, Lauren could not have anticipated that this seemingly small act would have such far-reaching consequences for the trajectory of her own career. In an interview, she said, people need to understand that the Lauren Hill they were exposed to in the beginning was all that was allowed in that arena at the time. I had to step away for the sake of the machine. I was being way too compromised. I felt uncomfortable having to smile in someone's face when I really didn't like them or know them well enough to like. Moreover, when Beyonce was busy selling her soul, Lauren was busy gaining all the spiritual aura as miseducation stands as an immaculately crafted master masterpiece, brought to life through the collaborative efforts of a diverse ensemble of musicians. Its lyrics remain unrivaled expressions of both heartache and rebirth. Can you, has anybody ever noticed that every time Beyonce feels threatened, somebody's career just ends tragically? It just go down the list from Aaliyah on, on every time she felt threatened by anybody, every time a, any lady with any talent came, into the mix. Beyonce wanted nothing to do with her. She always rolling her eyes. She always just she wants to be the she wants to be the center of attention. She wants to be the queen of everything. That's why she's been practicing the witchcraft and everything she can do to be in the position she's at. But now the industry is taking up. Have y'all noticed how the industry is starting to just take over and do whatever the fuck they want to do? Diddy, you want to play? Okay, well, fuck it. We're just going to let all your skeletons out. We don't go, who you going to tell? What are you going to tell on us? Uh, we going to, you know what's going to happen. You got You better shut up. Everybody's skeletons just coming out. Everybody, left and right. Symbolizing liberation from the constraints of society and a steadfast reliance on a higher power. And in my humility, you know, and, and in those places that most people wouldn't expect a lesson to come from. That's where I learned so much. Na name somebody in the chat. Everybody name somebody Beyonce got pissed off at and ended their career. Just name somebody she been jealous of and, and fucked up shit for. Them. Just just name just name drop some females that Beyonce didn't been jealous of. Go ahead. And the complete album Odyssey presented by Beyonce in Lemonade in 2016 shares a comparable coherence with the unified vision of Miss Education. Beyonce, who included a cover of X Factor during her 2014 on the run tour, has acknowledged the influence of Miss Education on her own artistic expression. Speculation resurfaced as Beyonce was known for engaging in endeavors that were profitable to her. Fans once more criticized Beyonce for what they perceived as appropriating a legendary song for her own fame. The sentiment grew that Beyonce chose to sing Lauren's song in order to enhance her success and glamour. Somebody says Saucy Santana. <laughs> Yo, y'all ain't shit. One of the internet users wrote, the people who aren't getting it aren't close enough to God to understand the depth spiritual matters. Being lukewarm has been popularized, but the real ones know the real ones. Another one said, why are y'all expecting holiness from Beyonce in the first place? You don't reach that level of fame without giving your allegiance to the other side. The industry is evil and you only become a big as they allow you to, and they only allow it if they know you are all in with them. There is dark, dark magic involved with the music of the biggest artists. Getting upset over this one song is like reaching into a barrel of rotten apples and picking one to throw away. Meanwhile, during the previous year, the singer made a notable return to the stage, delivering a series of highly acclaimed performances at festivals across the USA and various venues in and around Europe. However, just as her career seemed to be gaining momentum, a wrench was thrown into the works today. Reports are indicating that she might be facing potential jail time due to unpaid taxes for the years 2005, 2006, and 2007. These unpaid taxes have accumulated to a staggering sum of $1.5 million.
Man, man, man. You see, they trying to get rid of everybody right now. Everybody is up for grabs right now. You see, they they just said they uh everybody in the chat saying Carrie Hilson, Maya, I didn't see Blue Cantrell, I didn't see uh Kelly Rowland, I didn't see some of everybody, I didn't see some of everybody. Look, Aaliyah. Look, man, Beyonce don't like no chick that's going to give her any type of, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever. Who is that? Just send me a cash app before we get on part four. Uh, G Money, I appreciate you for that 20 piece on cash app. Salute. I got you. This hell got sentence. And salute to Ebony for that five piece. I appreciate you. Ebony says, uh, Tierra Marie, Emil, Aaliyah, Blue Cantrell, salute. Three months of imprisonment to be followed by one year of probation. And during that one year of probation, she'll have three months of house arrest. In response to these claims, she has penned a chilling open letter, shedding light on what she alleges to be a perilous landscape within the music industry. Over the past several years, Lauren has chosen to stay in what could be referred to as an underground domain. This decision was driven by the goal of nurturing a community of individuals who share similar ideals, individuals who seek autonomy and the freedom to chase their aspirations, shielded from the influence of a media-backed military-industrial complex driven by a markedly distinct agenda. She said, Having put the lives and needs of other people before my own for multiple years, and having made hundreds of millions of dollars for certain institutions under complex and sometimes severe circumstances, I began to require growth and more equitable treatment, but was met with resistance. That's just one incident. It is also believed that Aliyah was also ruined by Beyonce, and it was revealed by Kanye West. For an extended period, Kanye West's camaraderie with Beyonce and Jay-Z stood out as one of Hollywood's most celebrated friendships. The connection appeared genuinely unbreakable, fostering the belief that their bond would endure indefinitely. Salute Stephanie for that 10 piece on uh, Cash App. I appreciate you. Salute. However, contrary to expectations, the dynamics of their friendship underwent a significant shift. Over time, their once solid connection began to fray, reaching a point where communication between the three pop stars became scarce. Sources suggest that their relationship has deteriorated to the extent that meaningful conversations are now a rarity. Despite the strained ties, Kanye West remains unreserved in expressing his thoughts on the matter. He clearly said that her mother was sacrificed with many others, and still nobody is standing up against the supposedly cruel organization. Looks like people who can't be controlled can only be traumatized or go missing. Well, we all know Kanye always speaks whatever is on his mind and nobody can stop him from doing that. Whether he's expressing his anti-Semitic views or exposing people for carrying out human sacrifices, Kanye's always going to let us know about his opinions. Well, again, Kanye just went all out with his heavy claims. And if you still didn't get the meaning behind his bizarre claims, then we can explain it for you. Salute to uh Big Sexy for being a member for 15 months. I appreciate you. Drop them flowers for Big Sexy and get them likes up, y'all. Y'all smash them likes. Let's go. Kanye hinted that a lot of celebrities are involved in human sacrifices. Now, he didn't exactly say this, but just insinuated it, but we are just good with cracking codes. Besides, he claimed that he couldn't be controlled by the people running Hollywood because he hasn't killed anyone. But then again, he gave us a list of people who could be controlled. And this leads us to the logical conclusion that he's hinting about the people who are involved in the Illuminati organization and have taken innocent lives before. That's what Kanye exactly said. They can't control me. They can control Shaq and Charles Barkley. They can control LeBron James. They can control Beyonce and Jay-Z. Ain't no name, I won't say. It's up. Even fans believed Kanye at this point and gave him their full support, saying, I believe it, especially when Beyonce talks about using the Bible pages as a tampon. Evil controls both Jay-Z and Beyonce. She wouldn't be as big of a star if Aaliyah was still with us, but she was sacrificed. God bless you, Ye, for confirming the evil within these people. We love you, yeah. So Beyonce said uses something about using Bible pages as a tampon. I'm going to be real. I, I didn't know that. That's news to me. Did, did Can y'all drop the gems? If she, did she really say that shit? I mean, I'm pretty sure she did, but I'm just, did she really say that shit? Did she really say that she uses Bible pages as a tampon? They say, yeah. Oh, I believe uh, Crystal said it. I believe you, Crystal. Damn, Beyonce. Okay. Well, she's an evil motherfucker. I ain't surprised because she's evil. And I told you she was a witch and she didn't believe in God anyway. So. I mean, her doing that really just confirms everything I already knew about it. Damn. Stay safe. When do you start questioning how lucky some motherfuckers keep getting? Right. Is it really a conspiracy? Not only Kanye, but Jaguar Wright also have some solid points to make regarding Aliyah's death. 
According to her, when Alia died, Beyonce's solo career was struggling and all she needed was an empty spot that could make her popular overnight. Well, Aaliyah's death seems to be the needed push for her struggling career and now look, she is known as the queen of many hearts. Despite the reality that Aaliyah is gone now, till when are we going to let the same people benefit off the same kind of tragedy over and over again? It's high time that they should pay for their crimes. Even fans are praising Jaguar for standing up for their beloved songstress saying, I will never forget Aaliyah. She will always be in my heart. I hate what the industry did to her. It is hard for me to hear her music nowadays without getting choked up. Her soul was love, endless love. You could see it in the way she treated other people. She was of pure heart. Thank you for speaking on this Jaguar. So Beyonce said, I plug my menses with the pages of the holy book. What the fuck? See, I don't listen to Beyonce, so I did not know she said that. I don't even listen to Beyonce. But yeah, she said she plugged her cycle with the pages from the Bible. So Hey, y'all, did that's that's y'all queen. Beyonce and Jay Z have faced recurring accusations of engaging in dubious activity. So Beyonce and Jay Z, they're just as evil as as everybody portrays them to be. I mean, I'm not surprised that Beyonce says some shit like that. I mean, look at her and her husband. I mean, he quotes Aleister Crowley. You know, say so he 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 definitely uh he definitely quotes quotes Aleister Crowley so I'm not really shocked at anything they do at this point. Let's continue y'all. We almost got 2000 people in here. Let's go get the likes up y'all. Sometimes it's overwhelming. Why if I give me my talent, my gift? Word on the street is that Beyonce is starting to get fed up with Jay-Z's antics, and his latest escapades might just be the last straw. Apparently, she's allegedly gearing up to spill the tea and expose him once and for all. So, what exactly is going on? At the Grammy Awards, while accepting the Dr. Dre Global Impact Award, rapper Jay-Z didn't hold back. With his 12-year-old daughter, Blue Ivy, at his side, he basically said that music and voting for the Grammy Awards are subjective, and he couldn't help but notice that his wife, Beyonce, has never won Album of the Year. I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. So even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. The camera then cut to Beyonce, looking slightly apprehensive in the audience. Taking aim at other nominees, Jay-Z continued. Some of you are going to go home tonight and feel like you've been robbed. Some of you may get robbed. Some of you don't belong in the category. When I get nervous, I tell the truth. Viewers were. So what do y'all think about the, him begging them to give her album of the year? It's like something is going on with Jay-Z and Beyonce right now. Just pay attention. Look at her body language. Look at how he acting. Uh, they not such a happy couple. I'm pretty sure. Let's Quick continue. To speculate if he was taking aim at Taylor with his remarks, who has received 52 Grammy nominations and won 14, four of which have been album of the year. Yeah, you were taking shots at Taylor Swift because Taylor Swift is the queen of the industry right now. Y'all was taking shots at her in real time. You sent Jay-Z up there to, to take his shots at her. And that's going to be the downfall of him because he going against everybody when he does it. You fucking with the NFL money at that point. Her latest win saw her triumph over Boy Genius. The record, Janelle Monet, The Age of Pleasure, John Batiste, World Music Radio, Lana Del Rey. Did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean VLVD, Miley Cyrus, Endless Summer Vacation, Olivia Rodrigo, Guts, and uh, SOS? For context, Beyonce has been nominated for Album of the Year five times. The first was in 2010 for I Am Sasha Fierce, then a year later as a featured artist on Lady Gaga's The Fame Monster. After that, she got nods for Lemonade in 2017, and the most recent nomination was for Renaissance in 2023. According to some people, Lemonade in particular looked like a sure album of the year winner. I mean, we can all agree that Beyonce really hit it out of the park with that album. From exploring the emotional impact of Jay-Z's cheating to addressing generational pain and racial inequality, it was deep. And let's not even start with how she blended genres using reggae, rock, hip-hop, soul, funk, country, and electronica, accompanied by that visually stunning album. Yeah, that year, Adele was the one who won album of the year and in her acceptance speech adele also said that if there was one person who deserved the award it was beyonce she even went as far as saying my artist of my life is beyonce jay-z definitely agrees that his wife has been snubbed for far too long and he made it crystal clear that he believes beyonce should have won album of the year at some point during her career to a lot of people including jay-z it's ridiculous that even though beyonce has over 30 grammys literally just one of her 32 grammy wins has come in the big four categories which includes album of the year record of the year song of the year and best new artist well she ain't made her big sacrifice she ain't made her big you know she she's overdue beyonce has not made no damn sacrifice since she's been in the industry she's gotten everything handed to her and ain't did shit and that's the reason why 
single ladies won song of the year in 2010. But other than that, all her other wins have been in genre categories, which clearly isn't enough for her and Jay. Anyway, although the Beehive applauded Jay-Z for publicly supporting his wife, there was a section of fans who felt it was all just for show. What's more, in the same Grammys, people noticed something strange when Jay-Z offered her a drink, and she refused to take it. Welcome back to the Grammys, everybody. You know, when you eat... See, look, I seen that shit. It was kind of weird. He was trying to give her a drink and... Uh. A record. There's no way you don't get to hold your Grammy. He looked furious with her after that, and it was clear that he was just trying to control his anger because they were in public. Fans are now speculating that he could have drugged the drink, and that's why she refused it because she didn't want to be drugged out of her mind on her big night. Anyway, it appears things might be so bad for Beyonce to the point that even her family members are trying to intervene. And y'all do remember, it, it has been reported, and I had some some uh, blind items that said that he keeps her sedated, just like Cassie was sedated by Diddy all that time. They said Beyonce was a, a drug, uh, you know what I'm she was on drugs too, as well, uh, allegedly. There have been rumors for years about how Solange is probably not Jay-Z's biggest fan, and girl, does she keep proving it every day. The streets have been saying for years that she isn't exactly the biggest fan of Beyonce's relationship and marriage to Jay-Z because she just doesn't like him. You see, an altercation between Solange and Jay happened on May 5th, 2014 at the Met Gala after party at the Standard Hotel in New York City. It gained widespread attention when security footage from an elevator was leaked to the media. In the video, Solange Knowles, the younger sister of Beyonce, could be seen physically attacking Jay-Z. Man, man, we all remember that shit. I think everybody in this motherfucker remember that. Let's get the likes up, man. Let's get to part two of that. Let's get to the next part of this video, man. We, I told y'all, when we get to Jay-Z and Beyonce, we gonna be talking about the whole industry tonight, man, because Beyonce and Jay-Z connected to everybody, from the old people all the way down to the young. This shit don't stop with these two. It's going to get loose. And when they come tumbling down, everybody coming tumbling with their ass. You see, an altercation between Solange and Jay happened on May 5th, 2014 at the Met Gala after party at the Standard Hotel in New York City. It gained widespread attention when security footage from an elevator was leaked to the media. In the video, Solange Knowles, the younger sister of Beyonce, could be seen physically attacking Jay-Z, while Beyonce initially stood by without intervening. The footage showed Solange kicking and punching Jay-Z, with a security guard attempting to restrain her. Beyonce eventually stepped in, putting herself between Solange and Jay-Z. Ten days after the incident, the trio released a joint statement addressing the drama. As a result of the public release of the elevator security footage from Monday, May 5th, there has been a great deal of speculation about what triggered the unfortunate incident. But the most important thing is that our family has worked through it, they said in a statement to the Associated Press. Jay and Solange each assume their share of responsibility for what has occurred. They both acknowledge their role in this private matter that has played out in the public. They both have apologized to each other, and we have move forward as a united family. The statement continued, the reports of Solange being intoxicated or displaying erratic behavior throughout that evening are simply false. At the end of the day, families have problems and we're no different. We love each other and above all, we are family. We put this behind us and hope everyone else will do the same. Two months later, Solange cleared the air about the altercation with Lucky Magazine. What's important is that my family and I are all good, the singer said. What we had to say collectively was in the statement that we put out and we all feel at peace with that. Beyonce kept talk of the incident live in August 2014 when she debuted a remix of her song Flawless that seemed to reference the famous elevator brawl. The lyrics read, of course sometimes Ish goes down when there's a billion dollars on an elevator. Following his wife's footsteps, Jay-Z appeared to call out the famous footage in his song Kill Jay-Z off his 2017 album 444. He rapped, you egg salon John, knowing all along, all you had to say you was wrong, but you gotta do better boy, you owe it to blue. You had no father, you had the armor, but you got a daughter, gotta get softer. Well another reason why Jay-Z may not be liked by Solange is purportedly due to his alleged controlling behavior towards Beyonce. Jay-Z and Beyonce are arguably the Hollywood power couple. And they are the power couple, but everybody in the industry know that that man keep that woman drugged up. And sometimes she probably be trying to break free, but she can't. Whoop de whoop de whoop. But we all know, man. We we see this shit clear as day. But that doesn't mean their relationship was without its complexities. Despite their combined fortune of nearly two billion dollars, a luxurious home, and the admiration of their peers, the dynamics of their marriage presented a different story. For those unfamiliar with Beyonce and Jay Z's journey as a couple, they have consistently faced scrutiny for the unconventional aspects of their relationship. For example, they first met when Beyonce was just a teenager, while Jay Z was in his thirties. Reflecting on those early days, Beyonce once shared in an interview, I was 18 when we first met, 19 when we started dating. There was no rush. No one expected me to run off and get married. The couple officially began dating when Beyonce was 19 and Jay-Z was 31. 
sparking concerns among fans, with some speculating about the possibility of Beyonce being You Know What by Jay-Z. Setting aside the age gap, observers have also raised eyebrows about the uneven... Do y'all think that Jay-Z got with Beyonce prior to her being 18? Does anybody in the room feel like Jay-Z was dating her before that, allegedly? Power dynamics right from the beginning. When Beyonce and Jay-Z embarked on their romance, Beyonce was already quite popular. But Jay-Z was an industry heavyweight with significantly more clout and influence than she had at the time. This, coupled with their age difference, led to doubts and conversations about how imbalanced the relationship might have been from the start. However, over the years, the playing field has somewhat leveled out because Beyonce has become the biggest artist in Hollywood. She's literally the most decorated artist ever and holds the Grammy record as the most awarded person in the history of the awards. But even with this, fans still feel a certain way about the marriage. So Jay-Z has faced criticism, with some labeling him as a predator. Then there's also the fact that Jay-Z was Beyonce's first real relationship. She has opened up about how she didn't have the typical childhood or teenage years. Yeah, so that was her first. She, he taught her how to be a woman. We seen all this shit, man. I'm, I'm going to be real, man. That whole Jay-Z and Beyonce relationship, to me, it's, it's just weird, man. It, it's always been weird, and I feel like it's it's for the industry. I, I, I just got a feeling that that shit is for the industry, man. I, I, I got a funny feeling that that's just some made-up shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's just keep it. Let's just call it what it is, man. Hold on. Let's get to the next story with this shit. Let's get to the very next story. All right. Let's get to this. Let's bring Taylor Swift into the mix. Let's bring Taylor Swift up in here, man. Hold on, thugs. Let's go. You want to know who's going to blow the fucking lid? off of Taylor Swift and the secret she is hiding, it's definitely gonna be Lana Del Rey. At this point, Lana Del Rey has watched her supposed friend get four Grammys for being the absolute most mediocre woman I have ever heard seen, when Lana Del Rey honestly has a lot of talent. I 100% believe that Lana Del Rey, Beyonce, and Taylor Swift are all witches, but they are three very different types. Because the thing about it is all three of these women are witches. They are just very different types. And the supreme one is this one. And that's why these two are literally in the same boat right now. Do y'all believe that's true? They saying Taylor Swift right now is the head honcho, the supreme witch. Taylor got all the power right now. And I mean, if you're looking around the room, Taylor getting that cake right now. Taylor eating right now, man. And Taylor everywhere. So it's, has Taylor taken over the industry? Because she ain't talented. But they just gave her this spot for what, though? Why does Taylor Swift got this spot, y'all? Stay woke. Don't get me wrong. I am not saying they are witches just because they are very successful women. I am saying they are witches because that's what I honestly see. And I won't even call them witches. Let's just say that there are three different type of women who use different type of spiritual tactics and rituals to achieve what they want. But Taylor Swift is the middle. She's the highest one. If you don't remember, Beyonce came out and said that she was actually a type of voodoo witch who practices voodoo. If you know about Lana Del Rey, she is what I believe to be an element witch where she is more in tune with elements like Fleetwood Mac and just a very river down type of witch where she isn't as, I want to say ritualistic, but she aligns more with earth. Now, when we get to Taylor, there is something about her veil that is getting thinner and thinner. Because like before Taylor came off as sweet, charismatic, very loving, it made sense why she had fans. Now, she, like she is coming off as arrogant, um, very senile. The way that she did Celine Dion was absolutely wrong. And I don't care what a Swifty says. And for those of you that try to deny that Beyonce practices voodoo or that she's a witch, you guys have never heard the Lemonade album and the opening to that album where she talked about plugging her minties with pages from the Bible and cutting her hair after it grew past her ankles. She literally talked about practicing witchcraft and she went on a podcast interview. It probably, I don't think it was a podcast. Excuse my mis misspoken word. It was an interview where she said, or someone else said that she does practice voodoo and what type of voodoo she practices, as well as this article that came out in 2018, where her former drummer accused her of witchcraft. And then I did another video on another person that said that she was actually put under a spell by the voodoo of Beyonce. 
And then you have Lana Del Rey, who has forwardly spoken about how she believes in God. Everyone who practices ritualistic magic or does witch-like tendencies is not always bad. That's why I believe Lana Del Rey is a white witch or a light witch. And what she practices is more spiritual. And her gain is something more of like wholeness of the soul. And then she also released this album called Season of the Witch. So before y'all get on here and try to say that I'm saying something against these women, oh, they're powerful, oh, this is the 1800s, 1700s. It's not that, this is honestly just what goes on in my head and I'm not disrespecting anyone. I am telling you, that woman back there, Lana Del Rey, look at her face. I kid you not, there is something very sinister about this woman. And as the veil gets thinner, there are two people, the people who are naive, like this woman smiling behind her and the woman in the back, Lana Del Rey, who firsthand knows what is going on behind the scenes. Everyone's face in the crowd was very disdain and like everyone knows something about her that they don't wanna say. And for this woman to be like a voodoo high priestess, she had the same look as everybody else. I kid you not. You see that man in the back? The veil for her, for Taylor Swift, is thinning, or either it is getting more prominent for people like the fucking Swifties. I'm telling you, Lana Del Rey is gonna blow the top off. And for those of you who don't understand, my account is literally conspiracy, and I talk about the things that come to my head. It doesn't make me insane. It doesn't make me a successful woman hater because I love all my successful women. I love them. But if I'm telling you something spiritually is off, nine times out of 10, it has nothing to do with who the person is, just what they do. Stay woke, y'all. Stay woke. So they saying, allegedly, the high priestess, witch, whatever, whatever, is Taylor Swift. And they saying she the head honcho. They saying Taylor Swift is the head honcho of all the witches right now. She, you know what I'm saying? She basically, she basically controlling the game. But Beyonce said, move the fuck out of her way. Hold on, thug. A celebrity witch very confidently came out and said that she knows that Beyonce is a witch and she explains why Beyonce wears the stuff she wears and that she probably has an altar. Do you consider yourself a witch? Oh, I am a witch. But how do I don't think for everybody to- Should I be scared? No. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know. Cause you know, they, they, they tell me Beyonce is a witch and shit like that. Oh, that she we is. should be scared. Yeah, okay. Yeah. She's an Ifa. So when she wears her yellow, that's Oshun. Oh. Uh, you know, riches and beauty and love and all of that, which I can see why she's connected to Oshun. But yeah, so it's a, it's another kind of tradition. Okay. Like a lot of people would think it's voodoo, but it's really Ifa. So it's a similar, it's like a lifestyle as opposed to religion. Yes. Cause I always wonder why she always got on them flowers and yeah. she got on that elaborate shit. I'm like, can nobody buy your clothes? Your clothes look different. No, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She probably gives her so she has her own altar. She gives her food. She has parties for her. All of that, just like um Summer Walker. Man, man, man. So Beyonce over there practicing that voodoo witchcraft, and that's kind of what led her into this damn spot she in right now. And that's why she got it. She gonna have to make her a damn sacrifice here pretty soon. Beyonce and Jay Z, because if you look at this, I'm just gonna play something for y'all. Listen to this shit. Listen to this. This is for the Swifties in the room too, in the Beehive. Now just listen to this shit. I'm telling you, the lady, she she ain't talented. Can't sing for shit. Can't sing for shit. I don't even want to hear it no more. I don't want to hear it no more. Just judge about this. Come on now. It, it, it ain't even close with the talent. So Swifties, let's let's not pretend like she's the most talented in the room. That she is the you know, you know I could get up there and scream like that and <laughs> I don't know what the hell Taylor Swift had going on right there. But let's continue to look at some shit with Beyonce. Let's continue looking at Miss Beyonce. Oh, we're not done, thugs. Let's continue. Yo, 
what up, what up, man? It's French Dose. We about to talk about it. I do this for educational and entertaining purposes only. All right, so y'all saw that, right? They said Beyonce broke the internet. She broke the internet, all right. Look at how spaced out she looks, bro. And did y'all notice her hand movements, right, when the video was playing? But I want y'all to pay attention to this. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, she, she broke the internet, all right, bro. She broke the internet, all right. She's throwing it in our in our faces. I'll I'll say me too because I witnessed it, <laughs> right? But a lot of y'all support this, and a lot of y'all get upset when I expose this, and it's right in front of y'all face, bro. The Super Bowl proved that she's a clone. Not only is she upset with the fact that that demon over there, Taylor Swift, right, is winning every time for the Grammys and pass her every time. Right, but she's throwing it in our face that she's a clone, bro. The video, the music video, was the red and black checker, uh, 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 checkers board right there. That's just one. That that's just one thing, one example right there. This her being a robot, right? Take a look at this. Look at her hands. Look at the difference in her hands, bro. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. Period. Not just. Not just. The, the tone and the color, right? Even though that's crazy, right? But the way her fingers and how long her fingers are and how thick her fingers are. And this was it, this was in within days. This was it was within days. One was the awards and one was the Super Bowl. A week's difference, and it looks like that. Let's go to the next one. Y'all can't y'all can't tell me that y'all don't see that, bro. Y'all can't tell me that y'all don't see that, man. My name French Dos. I do this for educational and entertaining purposes only. I'm here to expose this, man. I'm here to expose these people. Stop idolizing these celebrities. They casting spells on y'all while they while they shape shifting right in front of you. Literally right in front of you. She's upset, still crying about Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is a white woman in America. A of course she's going to win the Grammys every year. Of course she is, and you know that. That's the thing. You know that, and Jay-Z knows that too. And that and, and that goof, that clone, Kanye West, right, who, who pled allegiance to Jay-Z and swallowing man. You know what? <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. But even he was trying to go up against Taylor Swift. Who cares, man? Who cares about them awards over there? And I'm not trying to be racist at all. I'm mixed. I can't be. Stop idolizing these celebrities. They not in your best interest. These are demon people, bro. I do this for educational and entertaining purposes only, y'all. It's right there in front of your face, man. Pay attention. Leave it in the comments. Hit the like button and make sure y'all follow me here for more. What y'all think about that? Y'all think that y'all think they own something with that? Cause Beyonce out here looking real loose. Let's just call it what it is, man. Beyonce looking real loose. It's looking real sus with her and Jay Z. I don't know, man. Beyonce aging before our eyes, or what's going on, man? Let's let's continue to listen to. This. Let's look at, let's see what Tasha K got to say about this. Hold on, let's get in here with some Tasha K. Let's go. Hold on, thugs. Jay Z and Beyonce have canceled this year's rock nation brunch okay there's a lot of things going on a lot of allegations being uh moved around here with this rock nation brunch i know Nicki minaj right now is coming for for i guess the ex-ceo of rock nation or something i don't know i really thought that her and jay-z and beyonce were really good friends i didn't think that you know jay-z's company would be trying to you know take out someone that he counsels that's different there but um i did get a reason as to why it was canceled her feet hurt beyonce feet hurt she was on tour, too many cities. You know, she had foot surgery, and now it's, you know, she just got to rest her feet. And she don't feel like being fake with y'all at the Rock Nation brunch and running from no, no pissy leaves. Second, ain't nobody there to come. Diddy or his girls, uh, DJ Khaled, uh, Nicki Minaj, and Megan can't be in the same building. Meek Mill ain't got no money. Uh, <laughs> Lord. And yeah, Meek Mill been in some news recently too. Meek, we know you got your cheeks clapped, but we we gonna call you Cheek Mill from now. From now on, we gonna refer to you as Cheek Mill. Let's get back to Harvey. It. <laughs> She's banned. They don't trust her around Jay or any nigga at that. 
Lori Harvey can't come. They saying that her and Jay Z had something going on at a point, and her and Diddy, and her and everybody else allegedly. Uh, this the guest list is just faulty, and it's not so a list anymore because all the a listers are in lawsuits like me. They say you're not an a lister, Tasha. But let's continue. Kevin Hart going through a lot too. I'm telling you, they gave me the whole rundown. The guest list is just, it's going to look very Zeus-like. <laughs> and Beyonce be damn if she can't take pictures with no A-listers, okay? And Hallie and Chloe don't cut it because she made them. <laughs> there will be no free food today for you bottom bitches. Not on her dime, not this year. We got to figure out who's A-list or there's even an A-list because everybody catching lawsuits left and right and it looks bad for marketing. I would have came. You think Tina knows to let me in? All right, why knows? No, Tasha. You're not allowed, Tasha. Don't nobody want you near their damn facility, Tasha. You're, you're more like a Z-list celebrity, Tasha. No, I'm just fucking with you. But uh, no, you're not A-list. though. More like a D. But you know what I'm saying? Me and you might be able to get in the same room, Tasha K. You know what I'm saying? That's more like it. You and Ratchet TV. We on the same celebrity list. Let's keep that a buck. It's 2020, y'all. Yeah. yeah. And it's different than when it was 2016. Yeah. You know, the game has been elevated. Um, 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 as we can tell. Look at Diddy eyes in this moment. You look at Diddy was geeked from now. All them damn allegations then came out look at look at diddy eyes man diddy was full of that shit look look who right here cheek meal look butler mill cheek meal is right there of course meek mill was right there with diddy of course he was that's his damn boyfriend look he got his damn uh hot pink lipstick uh, suit on so i like i like it when you like that daddy i, lo I love it when you in that lipstick flavor daddy roll them no i don't want your sleeves touching your, your, your no have the sleeves on the forearms Get you, yeah, I, I like it like that, Daddy. There you go. <laughs> Look, Diddy was loose when when Meek picked that. Diddy bought that suit. It's 2020, y'all. Yeah. yeah. And it's different than when it was 2016. Yeah. You know, the game has been elevated. Um, um, um. As we can tell, there's there's no expense being spared. We had a black billionaire's lunch. Yeah, we had a black billionaire's lunch. There's a lot of weird shit going on in that room, Diddy. I I can only imagine. What kind of environment it was like after that damn party? Let's continue though. Let's get to the next video. Let's get to the next. Oh, hold on, no, no, not that one. That was another Tasha K one. I don't, want, I don't want that one right now. Let's get back to. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get to this one. Let's get to this Jay Z and Beyonce gym. Let's get to this one. I got, I got one for the Beyonce fans. Let's go to this one. Kathy White was first found out. Do y'all remember Kathy White? Who remembers Kathy White, the mistress? Do y'all remember the mistress? Let's continue. To be allegedly having an affair with Jay-Z when she was spotted at Club Tau in Las Vegas with Claudia Jordan and Diddy. When that news started to spread, allegedly... Salute Asher for being a member for 18 months. RG4L dropped them flowers for Asher, y'all. Let's go. Beyonce knew all. And get the likes up, y'all. Get the likes up. About it. And with Beyonce knowing about it, she contacted her, allegedly. And we will get into that when the announcement was made by this publication that was going to out this situation beyonce was just at the vmas showing her surprise pregnancy so kathy and jay-z have been messing around for years the song ring the alarm by beyonce is allegedly about kathy white that song and you know how beyonce doesn't necessarily like you know people around her man and you know, stuff in that nature. We've seen photographs of her side-eyeing certain women, how they're touching Jay-Z and around Jay-Z. You know, Beyonce does not play about her man. So with that being said, the song Ring the Alarm was allegedly about Kathy White. So they have been messing around allegedly for years. Cut to Beyonce going onto the VMAs, announcing her pregnancy with Blue Ivy. That is when Kathy allegedly got upset and and y'all remember that right when she said she was pregnant with Blue Ivy, that's whenever all this shit was going on. And this lady, I know y'all remember Kathy, man. Y'all better remember the mistress. This is where a lot of the shit started to connect. You could play connect the dots at this point, but let's continue. Went to the tabloids. It was threatening Jay-Z to go to big publications and state that she was having an affair with him. Not too soon after Beyonce announces her pregnancy and whatnot and, and all of this stuff. Kathy White passes away. 
she died. Now, aneurysms can be caused by all type of things, and they can also... And all of her social media was scrubbed. She don't exist. It's like she never existed, bro. Like, it's crazy how these... How these powerful people get away with what they get away with, but you can't find this mother, this this lady no more. Excuse me, you can't find this lady no more. Just appear out of nowhere, okay? With that being said, you can also get an aneurysm from blunt force trauma, meaning somebody hitting you with a blunt object. You can die from an aneurysm just from the injury, you know, alone. It could cause the brain to basically, you know, shut down or shift or you know, call up, cause an aneurysm in that moment for it to be able to explode within the brain and you die instantly. So the Illuminati conspiracy theorists are stating that we don't think that Kathy passed away due to just having an aneurysm. We feel like she was silenced, okay? So Beyonce... Somebody said, when you look her up, Beyonce pops up. I'm telling you, she don't exist. It's like she never existed. Like they wiped her off of the face of the earth. She don't got no social media. She don't got nothing. No records. No everything. She scrubbed everything. They allegedly knew that Kathy White and Jay Z were having an affair for years. I told you earlier, the song "Ring the Alarm" was allegedly about Kathy White. So was the song "Hold Up." Mystery publicist supposedly was the mistress of Jay Z. He allegedly gave her the same ring as the one he gave his wife, Beyonce. Over to organized noise entertainment. Once again, Organized Noise Entertainment, onlineblogspot.com. If you go over there, they actually spoke with the NYPD. The NYPD contacted a man named JJ that works for them and told them exactly what was going on to a certain degree. Now, they couldn't give them everything, but they definitely gave them a decent amount of information. And I think you're going to be, not pleasantly, but surprised by what they actually found out so let's get into what allegedly really happened to kathy update my nypd source has just and this was on 9 2 2011 confirmed with jj that the cause of death is listed as natural until further investigation can be completed and that's another one of those deaths that they said oh she just died of natural causes It'd be a lot of young people that they just be saying dying of natural causes. It's like, how, bro? Like, how? Let's, let's continue. HSK exclusive. HSK was the first to reveal that the 28-year-old Kathy White was Jay-Z's mistress. Yesterday, JJ got the news that Kathy White had suddenly passed away. So JJ quickly began his investigation. And guess what? Kathy did not die from a brain aneurysm as reported widely around the internet today. According to an NYPD detective who told me, Kathy's cause of death is uncertain, and later today we will have an off. Right now, the death is considered suspicious. I'll read that again. Right now, the death is considered suspicious. Kathy White died exactly one year to the day from when JJ broke the story of Jay-Z's affair with her. Here's exactly what the NYPD told JJ. A 911 call came in from an apartment on 130 West, 19th Street in Manhattan. Make sure y'all get the likes up and subscribe Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, y'all. Let's get back to it. But hey, subscribe to the channel. Smash the like button. Let's go. Ambulance came and took Kathy because she was sick. They took her to the Beth Israel Hospital where she expired. It was too early to be speculating that an aneurysm killed her. They will be doing an autopsy later today to check out her cause of death. But someone might have given Kathy a bad drug, so they'll do a toxicology, and we'll have to wait two weeks for that report. They always give them bad whoop-de-whoops, man. They be drugging these people and giving them all type of stuff that makes them... They be having doctors on speed dial to let, to let them know what they can give somebody to make them have heart attack like symptoms you know some stuff like that man like bro this stuff is evil the, the stuff they're doing out here the games they playing but wait there's more two weeks prior to her death kathy was contacted by a major tabloid that was investigating the jay-z connection she gave them a little information to go on but according to one of hsk sources following her conversation with the tabloid she called jay-z and told him that she was going public with their affair for a price these all happened in the last two weeks. Then a little more than 48 hours after the announcement that Beyonce was pregnant with Jay-Z's baby, this young lady suddenly dies under suspicious circumstances. 
Was Kathy trying to extort Jay-Z? I don't know. But if Jay-Z and Kathy had a phone conversation, the cops will be talking to him. You know why? Because Kathy's death is going to be investigated. Here's what a close friend to Jay-Z said about these accusations. Are you kidding me? Jay wouldn't throw his life away for a prostitute. Beyonce knows Jay F's around. Everybody knows. If Kathy was going to expose Jay, no one would believe her. Jay got too much to lose. The baby coming and all. Take Jay's name out of the conspiracy theories. Yeah, I bet you would want everybody to take Jay-Z's name out of it. Man, you don't know what the hell Jay-Z had going on. Jay-Z is an evil motherfucker. Let's call it what it is, man. That dude is evil. Pure evil. And so is Beyonce. So allegedly, the 911 call came in on September 1st, and they came to her Manhattan apartment. Allegedly, Kathy was removed from her apartment, and she was taken to the hospital where she expired. Meaning that if she expired from an aneurysm, they would not have known that quickly. And in aneurysms just happen. It's not something that you can, oh, I have a really bad headache, so I'm having an aneurysm. Like, no, it just, an aneurysm is literally a blood vessel bursting within your brain. That is something that just poops and happens. One minute you're here, and the next minute you are gone. So why would she call the ambulance to her home and remove her if she felt like she was having an aneurysm? That doesn't make sense. There usually aren't any, you know, prior things to look for when an aneurysm happens. That's because they made the whole thing up. They made it all up, man. This was a setup to take this woman out before she could expose everything and ruin Jay-Z and Beyonce's relationship, just like they took Pimp C out before he could do the same thing. There's no symptoms or anything. It just happens. So another weird thing is it's kind of like the same thing with kim porter you know she kind of just passed away so it's the same thing with kathy she kind of just passed away and with her making the 911 call herself you would have thought that somebody else would have found her body because with an aneurysm you just kind of passed away right where you are so why wasn't the 911 from call from somebody else the 911 call was from her that's what even makes everything else weird man 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 it says, hey, Jay-Z, I was the reporter who talked to your alleged mistress right before she died, was taken out. I know everything. I know what you did. Go F yourself. Your time is coming. Maybe you and Diddy can share a prison cell together. Justice is coming. Man, man, man. Man, man, man. That's the Kanye West shit. But this shit is yeah i mean hey it is what it is you gotta you got call a spade a spade at some point man you gotta call a spade a spade these people evil and they, they they took that girl out she was about to expose everything and they took her out all right let's continue let's get to this this one this is another sloan bella clip that i want to get into let's go to this one i'm a big girl um she's a small child as she's saying this and she's like quite connected to and it says sloan bella channels Aaliyah's energy in this segment she mentions r kelly whitney houston j-lo and jay-z her physical body and she felt so cool and listen to this when r kelly was placed in her path i want you to hear that she's saying this was he was placed in her path Aaliyah's is talking about her first connection with r kelly she is showing me that she was placed in his path. It was known to her family who R. Kelly was, and it was known to him who Aaliyah was. This was not an accident. And as much as he's in the news for being a creep and a pedophile, this was not really about that, although that is what would happen due to his age and her age. Okay. And everybody knew this was again the families all knew everybody was up uh, now that's the that's one part of the r kelly thing that i do agree with a lot of people that everybody should have been held accountable because everybody knew and everybody was cool with it until money wasn't coming in or other other things but everybody played the game with you know what i'm saying everybody knew r kelly was doing this and doing that it wasn't even like the uncle set the whole thing up with Aaliyah. let's continue okay so there's a huge age difference now, it's interesting because she was placed in his path at about the age of 12, all right? So she was pretty young. They say that they got married at 15, and by the way, they did, but I'm going to describe this marriage differently. First of all, on a sexual note, that happened between 
12 and a half and 14 for them, like right in that time frame, they were very physical together. What she's showing me with that is I'm seeing them in a recording studio. So I'm actually seeing them in a recording studio. I'm seeing family members around them or people that were sent to watch her, you know, do that kind of thing around her. And I'm seeing the two of them sit down and it's kind of, it reminds me of if any of you grew up with people that played um, bands and played in their garage and it was really dank and musty and people were smoking and people were drinking and like you'd sit on the floor and you, God knows what you get on your pants kind of thing. It feels like that. Like I'm in some dirty kind of part of a recording studio off in the back with a dark wall. The two of them are sitting there. Now here's what's interesting. I get very vivid, very, very vivid pictures of her. Okay. So R. Kelly is starting to kiss her. Okay. She's young. She's probably seriously 12 and a half or 13. He's moving forward towards her to kiss her. She wants him to because she thinks she's grown up. Then she's showing me behind the scenes. This is supposed to happen. This is supposed to happen. Okay. So she's showing me as much as she thought it was her intention to do this because she's a grown up. She's a big girl. She can do this. It was already set up energetically behind the scenes. And I'm not by any way abdicating what he did. That's not what I'm talking about. And that's, and, uh, and I understand what she's saying right there. This was already the plot to do like, yeah, R. Kelly is guilty of what he did and he should not have done what he did. But like I said, there was other people orchestrating the same. They were orchestrating this shit. Uh, the uncle was bringing Aaliyah to, for this to happen. This was supposed to be done. He already knew R. Kelly was going to do this. You know what I'm saying? Like it was already known that R. Kelly was doing this to the people that you know they knew. That's my point. Like everybody knew. So yes, R. Kelly is wrong. Yes, R. Kelly deserves to be where he's at. But there's a lot of other people who deserve to be right there with his ass. They just snitched and got a slap on the wrist. And they all were sick and they all needed help. And every last one of them deserved, deserved to rot in jail or hell, wherever. But let's continue. It seems like this is a very controlled environment. Now, I do see him kissing her. And what I'm seeing is I am seeing a packet of something in his mouth that's a liquid. And he puts it into her mouth. And then I'm seeing them connect together energetically. I actually feel like he gave her some sort of a drug, love drug, drug, drug. I don't know what it is. But it went from his mouth to her mouth in a little tiny I can almost put my name on it. It's like I've seen it before, but I can even tell you what it is. He's putting this into her mouth. I have very clearly that image. She is sitting there and suddenly she is with him. They are together. I'm not talking sexually. I'm talking energetically as in their energy is bound together. This to me is reminding me of something you would do like a love potion, love magic, something sexual like that to bind them together. Now, the word marriage comes up, and I do believe there was, quote, a legal marriage between the two, but behind the scenes, the reason for it, the agenda that was not overtly out front was because there was a business connection between the two. So there's a really strong business connection between the two of these people, and Aaliyah and R. Kelly are following forward on their path to be together. I am seeing that in his mouth. When he's making out with her, he's putting, it's a, um, it looks like an iodine packet, but not. It's a, a plastic container. It's got liquid in it. It's very tiny. He had it in his mouth. He put it into her mouth. Once that's done, their energy sealed together. This is why she was with him. Now, this to me is sexual magic, uh, uh, energetic tie, something going on behind the scenes, but it was meant to happen. And the family knew it was going to happen. They just had to get Aaliyah along with it. Again, like I said, this is all a plot. Everybody knew Aaliyah knew or Kelly knew the family knew. And this is the same game that Jay-Z played Diddy. This is the same game that's been going on in the industry. And that's why I'm telling you, all these things are connected. Y'all. She didn't really have the control that she appeared to have over her life. Her energy, she keeps showing me J-Lo over here. So I keep seeing J-Lo. Okay, so her energy was focused towards what J-Lo is now was Aaliyah then. Now, I'm not talking about talent. I'm talking about presentation of the personality. I'm talking that way. She keeps pointing out J-Lo, J-Lo, J-Lo over there. 
So I feel like the two were coming up in tandem or I guess JLo's older. I'm not quite sure how that works, but she's pointing it out to me. The other thing that I'm seeing with her right now is, and I'm going into just the background that we know of her from her persona publicly, but she is showing me the instance with R. Kelly and she's saying, don't be so quick to believe everything is exactly the way it's presented. Now, I believe he's a pedophile and a, a prick and everything else, but she's showing me behind the scenes things that are going on. And she's saying he's captive like she was captive. So she's recognizing in him what she saw in herself. So there's a, there's a uh, focus between the two of them that neither one of them was in control of their own life the way that a soul should be. So they were in servitude, that's what I'm getting. She is saying that part of what L R. Kelly's problem is, is he has no memory of some of the things he's being accused of because of the way that he was operated. She's kind of showing me like this, like he was operated like a mechanical doll. She's moving like a mechanical doll. So there's something in that either it's um, he was hypnotized, he was drugged. He And I'm not saying it's not part of who he is. I think they have to work with people that have this kind of inclination. She flashes me right back to her family. Her family was the same kind of family. They expected this of her. Her career path was not pushed for her because she was talented or extraordinary. She is both. I'm saying that. She is both because I can feel the energy like what? Um, she is both. But the family pushed her because it was their duty within the construct of where they were placed within the entertainment industry. And I'm seeing that. So she was given a ride to be who she was based on who her family was. And, and, and she was placed forward that way. That's how it was. She is showing me before her death. And it's fascinating because she's showing the other people in the music industry that we know now that are very big people that have married very big singers. And this one particular guy, and I refer to him in a lot of videos, but in this particular video, I'm just going to straight out say it, Jay-Z. And we all saw that coming. I told y'all, Jay-Z is on the menu today. Jay-Z got a lot going on, man. He's always had a lot going on since he was out there with 16-year-old, what was it, 16, 15-year-old Foxy Brown and shit? Come on, y'all. And he did a lot of shit before that. Jay-Z been a menace out here. Let's continue. And it feels like Jay-Z had a focus on Aaliyah in a position a little bit like she could be my wife. And he may have just thought she was hot and whatever. But it feels more nefarious than that. And it feels like it was orchestrated. And it feels like at the time of her death, she's going to bring me to the pilot. And she's going to bring me to the whole death scene so I can kind of understand what's going on. I have not looked into it. So I'm going to go freeform here with it. But what she's showing me with Jay-Z is he had her eye on. He had his eye on her. And she wanted to do stuff over here. And he wanted to consume or control. That's what this is about. He wanted to consume or control her. So there's a feeling of she wants to be independent and free form. He wants her to come with him. She's not listening either way. And therefore, she needs to be taught a lesson. So, Yep. And that's exactly what went down with uh, Aaliyah. Stay woke, man. I just wanted to throw that in there because Jay-Z's name comes up in that as well. Jay-Z's name comes up in a lot. Him and Beyonce seem to just have a, a whole bunch of shit going on they they seem to have a whole bunch of shit going on and if you if you go back in the day you remember there was an alleged sex tape that was out there this sex tape was about to take flight in the industry and it was about to get exposed and this sex tape allegedly had beyonce's face in it now the person with this tape was Someone from Texas named Pimp C. Now, Pimp C was going around telling everybody about this damn tape he had. He was telling his boys and showing his boys. That I think Pimp and Ken seen this shit, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, I think Pimp and Ken seen this shit. But all in all, they ended up knocking Pimp C off due to this. Now, Pimp C wouldn't shut the hell up about a lot of the, the LB, Woody, Woody, you know what I'm saying, whatever shit in the industry. He didn't like it. He was exposing a lot of the rappers who were on the zesty side. He was exposing a lot of shit. He wouldn't shut up. He was doing his Tupac thing, just going against everything, talking shit. But it was that tape that got him knocked off. And a lot of people say Jay Prince played a part in that. 
A lot of people throw Jay Prince's name right in that mix with Pimp C. They said a real rapper. Pimp was in it. They said Pimp C is a real one. He spoke on it. He really, he called out the industry. Uh, it's on hood. I'm just saying, man, Pimp C went against the industry and lost. Beyonce being a trance all the time. Beyonce be full of drugs all the time, allegedly. Beyonce be doped up. Jay-Z be keeping her full of that shit. He always keep her on her toes or off her toes or whatever. They said politics is wrapped up around it, all those industries. Everything is wrapped up in it. The politics play a part in not only this, the politics play a part in sports. Everything is aligned. If you think sports, politics, religion, and all that, if you think it ain't all under the same umbrella, it is, man. Stop being the industry, the industry, entertainment industry. All of this shit is, is combined. Everything. It made sense when the Lakers won the, the bubble championship after the Kobe Bryant thing. It just makes sense. Everything is like writing a book, man. You got to have the best ending possible. Every year, the NFL got to write a script out, and it has to make sense for their pocketbook. If it don't make sense for their pocketbook, they not liking that shit. The NBA, every other thing the same way. Boxing, you think boxing ain't rigged? or whatever? Boxing definitely plays the same game. One sport that I probably say is not is probably UFC. That's probably the one of the sports that's real around this motherfucker. Not a script writing in that shit. I believe the UFC is definitely real. Other than that, all sports is up for the same shit. Politics, the same shit. Everything is the same game. In the industry, entertainment, music, uh, fashion, TV, you know what I'm saying? Movies. It don't matter what industry you go in. It's all the same ball game, man. St stop being asleep. Wake up. <clears throat> he made Jay-Z. Wait on Big Pimp and all those too short and Bun B tried to convince him. Yeah, he didn't want to, he didn't he did not want to do it at all. He was totally against it. He was totally against everything Bun B wanted to do. Bun B wanted to do every he told Bun B to stay the hell away from Jay Prince as well. He was pissed off at uh, Bun B when he got locked up and he they he signed that contract with uh with Jay Prince. He said it's cool to get money with him, just don't do business with him as far as don't sign no contracts with him. You can go get some money with him. You can do this, but do not sign no paperwork with Jay Prince. He told Bun B that Bun B went against everything Pimp C stood for when he was locked up. Said uh, Jay Prince has the copy, y'all allegedly. Yeah, that's that's been alleged that Jay Prince does have that copy, and he's holding it over Jay Z's head. Jay Prince gonna find himself in hot water uh, soon enough. His time ain't came yet. But you see, he already lost uh, Shakur Stevenson. Shakur Stevenson left his ass. Shakur Stevenson said he don't even want nothing to do with boxing no more. The stress of everything then got to him because they was going to have to get rid of his ass. He seen they was going to get rid of him or finesse two times. One of them was going to go. Well, it's going to be finesse now. Watch. Finesse going to get locked up or he going to get out of there. He can't come up with a hit no more. It's over for finesse two times. Just watch how this industry plays out, man. I, I see this shit coming from a mile away, y'all. I be, I be predicting everything in this industry. I believe Bun B know what happened to Pimp C. I believe you right. Pimp C called out all the DL ish, and he wasn't gonna stop. Man, man, man. They said uh, Jay Prince has the copy. It said Jay Z birthday is twelve six. Yeah, and he that was uh the day Pimp C died on Jay Z birthday. They said Ratchet is telling us everything. Jay Z was born thirty years before the internet existed. Ratchet TV correct. Everybody gets whacked. Jay Z and Beyonce is the modern Tina and Ike Turner behind the scenes, allegedly 12 4. Yeah, stay woke. They said when you saw E40 being plastered at all 49ers game and Taylor Swift at all the KC games, you knew. Oh, yeah, you already knew. I already told everybody, look, I wanted Baltimore to go, and Baltimore should have been the team. But once I seen Taylor Swift was at every single Kansas City game. And every time all I seen was her hands raised in the air, every segment they did, man, I'm talking about every drive, they they clipped it to Taylor Swift to see her face. Either she had her hand on her face scared or she was jumping up and down with her hands in there. I'm like, oh my gosh, but if I see Taylor Swift one more fucking time. But right then, I even I think I got on here and told y'all, I was like, man, as much as I want Baltimore to win, KC is it's set up for KC to win. They just keep showing Taylor Swift too much. I think I told y'all that. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But I'm pretty sure I got on here and said KC was going to win due to Taylor Swift. And it's all about Taylor Swift, this whole thing. Even when I heard Roger Goodell get up there and say, oh, well, Taylor Swift brings in a whole different demographic 
for the NFL. She brings a younger demographic. We love her at the games. I, I knew right there Lamar Jackson don't stand no chance against KC. I seen Lamar take off running. He faster than everybody on that field, and he just slowed up. And I was like, yep, okay, I'm done watching this game. Yep, uh, I, 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 I'm glad I didn't bet on this shit. I'm glad I ain't put no money on Baltimore to win that shit because I knew they was going to rig that motherfucker. They said, y'all, this is a cautionary tale of all the glitters and not gold. You're right. Taylor Swift was throwing witch signs, her and Ice Spice. That's facts, Crystal Cove. Her and Ice Spice was letting it be known who was who in attendance. And they just doing nothing but energy harvesting. They're harvesting everybody's energy in that stadium. I, now, Ice Spice ain't got a talented bone in her body. All I heard her talk about is uh, being a munch and shaking ass in the deli. Every time I see a clip from her, she ain't doing nothing but twerking. I, I'm I'm so sick of her nappy head ass. I'm I'm so sick of seeing her, bro. I'm not like these thirsty dudes. I'm tired of seeing that damn ugly ass girl. Uh, I beg your pardon, Pat Mahomes. Man, Pat Mahomes played like a, a backup quarterback all year. Said demonic shows. She trifling. I felt KC was going to win them three fans. Yeah, man, that, that's true. That's true. Ice Spice had on the upside down cross. She sure did. I'm telling you, they let it be known where they was at. They let it be known who was in the building. Should have been Ravens, Niners. It was supposed to be. Uh, facts, but she everywhere is so orchestrated. NFL made $330 million off her being there. That was before the Super Bowl. That's facts. I'm telling you, she turned the NFL up this year. She made the NFL a lot of money. All of her fans went to the NFL watching Kansas City games and don't even know who the hell Patrick Mahomes is. Her fans don't know shit about football, but every one of them was watching every Sunday to see her every KC game. What is Taylor going to do today? What is Taylor going to do today? I'm sick of hearing about Taylor Swift, man. But she took Beyonce out of her spot, though. You can just bet. You can rest for sure she took Beyonce out of her damn spot. If anybody want to hit the link and chop it up about this, Beyonce, Jay Z ish that I've been talking about all day. Hit the link, man. Y'all hit the link if y'all want to chop it up with me, man. If not, it's all good. But if anybody want to chop it up, hit the link. Put your username in, your email. That's how you call into the show. It's not a number. You got to hit that stream yard link. Do we got a thousand likes on this damn stream yet? Let me see. We uh, okay. We had eight hundred and fifty four likes, man. Come on, y'all. We need a hundred and fifty likes, man. Hundred and fifty people smash that like button, man. I don't know what y'all own, but it's loose. My nephew retired early after that. They can listen. They still walk away. I only had eleven years. I don't know what the hell you talking about. I don't know. They said you are going too far now. I'm going too far about what? Oh, he's talking about Mahomes. No, nah, he did play average, bro. You know that. They said sports are in decline with their fans under thirty five. It's been like that for years. The NFL had no choice but to try to get more uh, flyover America involved by using Taylor Swift. No, nah, it was a smart, genius fucking move. They didn't, man. KC didn't work shit. It was a genius move to put her in position to do that. It was. Taylor was patting Kelsey on his back like she was trying to burp him. He thanked her for coming. Yeah, that, that man, they had no chemistry. You, you see how he won it when he was with his other girl. Man, That they didn't have no chemistry. He was like, hey, I appreciate you. You made me a lot of money. She was like, thank you. You made me very rich as well. I appreciate you. I appreciate the NFL. I'll see you next season. You know what I'm saying? They ain't going to be. Give it one more season, they're going to be done. I promise you. Her and I mean, either he finna ask her to marry him to up the sales or they finna just have a, a breakup in the middle of a season. It's going to be the downfall of Kelsey. That's why 49ers were pissed. I, yeah, I would be too if Taylor if I lost the uh, Super Bowl to Taylor Swift. They said nostalgia, demonic industry plant. Uh, I don't even know no Taylor Swift songs. I, I, to be real, I don't know not one Taylor Swift song. They said KC all day. Look, KC fans in here mad. Look, y'all okay? Y'all won. Ha ha! Well, congratulations, Taylor Swift got y'all a ring. They said he's planning to engage her. I bet he would. She, you know how much money she making that man. They said, remember Beyonce had the bed from the movie Devil's Advocate back in the day. Beyonce, an evil witch. Ice Spice looked like a doll with no brains. Ice Spice is one weird looking chick. <clears throat> said, facts. Let's see. It's, uh, it says, Travis is planning the engagement. You act like you right there next to Travis. They said, who is T Swift? I don't have no idea. She about to sing breakup songs soon. Bunch of brand new KC fans. Yeah, these they don't even know shit about football. She had Kanye at the game. It said more views and numbers. That's a fact. You damn right. We was pissed. I bet the hill y'all was. Ice Spice, she ain't. 
I don't know what that meant. They said Ice Spice looks like <laughs> damn. Y'all on damn Ice Spice ass. Then they on Ice Spice. Out of nowhere, everybody in the chat just started trolling Ice Spice. What the hell? Is there any Swifty? Do we have any Swifties in here? Are, are any Swifties in the room tonight? I just remember Scary Spice. I was like, what the fuck? Ice Spice. <laughs> he said, man, I remember the Spice Girls. I don't remember no damn Ice Spice. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, it's all about the numbers. If the numbers align, then you already know what it is. The numbers don't lie, though. The numbers never lie. And they said she made $330 million to the NFL. That's 33. Look, the number's right there. They told you she was supposed to do it. She made the NFL $330 million. There you go. The number 33 right there. Shit easy. This shit light work. Look, KC fans in here. Man, don't nobody give a damn about y'all uh, 2019 and up KC fans. Ain't got a KC post on their Facebook past, prior to uh, 2018. Keep it a buck. That's said she K2 Spice. Exactly, Ratchet Wendy lady. Y'all won it last minute, and it was quite a show at the end. That shit was playing the fuck out. Ice Spice don't even know what's going on. She don't even be, she clueless as hell. She don't even know how she in the industry, how to rap, how to write a bar. She couldn't even tell you what a bar is. All she gonna do is she gonna shake her ass while she ordering a ham sandwich. That's the only thing she could tell you is how to shake your ass while ordering a ham sandwich in a deli. Said, man, I learned this in 2020 and it effed me up. My Niners were robbed. Ice Spice took y'all ring from y'all. I never had no spicy ice. What the F going on? That's what I'm saying. Like, what the hell is, who is Ice Spice? She a whole plant. The whole Super Bowl was a ritual. That's facts. And then they brought Usher a zesty ass out there. She an industry plant. I agree with you. Very much so an industry plant. Yeah, she definitely I can't even listen to an Ice Spice song. What the if I looked up Ice Spice? Damn, Binky said I just found out who Ice Spice, Ice Spice was five minutes ago. Yeah, and, and it's not looking good. <laughs> she, she like, I'm not, I'm not feeling this Ice Spice shit. Look at older ladies in the room. Like, let me Google this damn Ice. Who the hell is Ice Spice? Ice Spice is a Chucky though. She do look like uh Chucky. She do look like uh Charles. Charles Lee, whatever his name was. was it Charles Lee Roy, whatever the hell his name was. Uh, Charles Lee something. What the hell is the Char uh, Chucky name? Charles Lee? Some I can't remember. Beyonce mother is a voodoo witch from New Orleans. Now that I believe we all got our money worth on the game. I didn't. I didn't even watch the Super Bowl like that. To be real, once you start seeing it, you can't unsee it. That's facts. Once you get woke up, you can't. You can't go back to sleep. You can't go back to sleep once you wake the fuck up, man. I'm be real with you. Said Ice Spice is following the Cardi B model now. Cardi B got played out. Cardi stole from Nicki. In two years, there'll be another. It's just going to be a whole bunch of strippers. Gonna Charles Lee Ray. Okay, I said Charles Lee Roy. Okay, yeah, it was Charles Lee Ray. Facts. Charles Lee Ray. Charles Lee Ray. She looked just like Charles Lee Ray. She looked like little orphan Annie to me. <laughs> she do look like Annie. <laughs> Ice Spice apparently wants to be an actress. That's why she's before her performing is bad. She don't really care about this rap gig. Man, that girl ain't talented enough to act. I don't want to see nothing from her. I can't wait till she done. I can't wait till her last day in the industry. That's what these poor girls get looking up to. Yeah, that's, that's who they got uh, the kids looking up to these days. We had 900 likes, y'all. Can we get 100 likes? Can we get 100 likes, y'all? Can we get 100 likes, man? Come on, y'all. What it is, man? I'm talking about... Well, yeah, I, I did my job with this damn story today, man. You already know, man, nobody covers shit quite like Ratchet. We had 2,000, what we, I think we had 2.2 .2 in here covering Beyonce and Jay-Z and, and Taylor Swift. Only Ratchet gang can do it like this, y'all. We didn't shut everybody else platform down and we didn't took over the streets. You know what I'm saying? We didn't took over the whole streets, gang. They mad at us. They big mad. They said... Ice, Ice Spice was born the first day of the new millennium, one one two thousand. Yep, she a damn industry plant. Did you hear about the three Chiefs fans that mysteriously freezing to death before the Super Bowl? I did not hear about that, but I ain't surprised. He said, KC brothers come up dead. I ain't feeling her. She a different month. Yeah, we had 2.2 .2 in the room tonight, y'all. We had 2.2 .2 in the room. They not fucking with us over here. I'm going to get you, Eddie. Uh man, we finna get the fuck up off here, y'all. Nobody wants to call in, so we finna go ahead and shut the show down. We're gonna jam some music on our way out of here. Man, I, I see all the ladies in the room tonight, so you know we're gonna end it a little different tonight. We definitely gonna jam out though, man. Everybody in the building, make sure you smash the like button on your way out. 
Y'all already know, ladies. Y'all know what it is. Can I take you home? Okay. Never let a bitch stretch me Before the microphone, I made a milli off the celly I love to see her walk away because it look like jelly Went from zero to 60 in two seconds on Pirelli I'm always at the gym, so I got a diamond fetish Smoking on the tail while I'm counting up this letter Stack it to the sky, I believe that I can fly Told a man in the mirror that you want hell of a guy If I can do it, so can you, but shit, who the hell am I? Who said it's lonely at the top, cause that's a motherfucking lie I bought my homeboys with me, ballin' in South Memphis like Dubai Rolls Royce is back to back to back to back, oh my god I mean that shit Hold up, let me finish. Wait, she so fine, I put it in and tried to touch her kidneys. Ah. I'm too motherfucking rich to go and eat at Denny's. What? But fuck that, I'm in a Jack Purdy drive through in a Bentley. Hey. Front seat got my semi. Off oh, yeah, I got plenty. Real up. Playing with these M's, but I started out with pennies. Yeah. A hundo in my skinny. Yeah. Louis 13, shots of top shelf, Remy. Yeah. Grew up thugging just like who was Deuce, baby Jimmy. Hey, hey, bang. Yeah. I grew up thuggin' on my South Memphis rug rack. Rug rack it drippin' on my neck, these bitches love it. Trip. When I pop out, I got bitch gigantic stupid racks. Fuck a job, I beat the block, I had to flip a pack. 
Self made nigga, I'm hustling. Can't go back to the days when I ain't had nothing. But I won't forget about the drugs. I was just stacking the racks in the trap on my shoe. But now I still this shit in the dump. I real keep sending them lows and I just keep dropping them. Call them back, I need another one. Another one. Round town with a pocket full of jacks. I take up them hundreds and fifties. Keep me a Drago, I got a banana clip and a A. I came with titties. Put the three shots in my dog, got a jet. Double my cup, so you know what I'm saying. Really having this shit, nigga. No, I ain't tripping. Can't ride the mob, nigga. I'm never flipping. Shit. Oh God. Yeah, I ain't never flip, flip. I don't think none of y'all niggas flipping yeah. these motherfuckers fat them get. Yeah. And I ain't worried about none of these little broke ass niggas. All these bitches, bitch. Everything a nigga do out here, these yeah. streets they just gon' mimic. Yeah. Ten five hundred for a shoulder, yeah. nigga gon' boogie. I ain't no gimmick. No I'ma call six point nose and six point eight. Yeah, yeah, they him it. Him it. That nigga really have motion. Nah. I just stir the whole damn myth. Yeah. Make a play with white and end up builder up make feeling. Yeah. Really made a killer, a killer. Off the back of ceiling, ceiling. Ever been in love? Cause uh-uh. I can't really catch no feeling, no feeling. Never had no nine to five. Uh-uh. Cause I love drug dealing, drug dealing. Yeah. Up in that field, a nigga going ass the wheel, the wheel. Be the block, hook yeah. to the dope, all gone. gone. Yeah, trapping real, real hard yeah. off a of two phone, both phone. Like I'm too late And I know I'm still great in spite of my mistakes You know it's authentic every rhyme I say My only regret is I made niggas wait See ain't too many like us, we like Venice bait And I don't fuck with busters, I can't integrate Grew up with these killers in my living space A lot of niggas folded through them village days Citywide gang and junction police raids LA Times rolling 60s made the front page I vow to never let tradition seal my fate Selling dope with hopes to graduate to real estate I knew I was drumming to a different beat Felt it in my stomach, I was just unique We decided we gon' let these visions speak Then we turned Swanson into Venice Beach S600 made back platinum dealer plates Wake up in this penthouse to the cityscape You know it's authentic every shit I say I knew self-destruction ain't the only way Sometimes perfect time feel like I'm too late But I know you still great in spite of your mistakes Before you run your race, you gotta find the pace Just make sure you cross the line and fuck the time it takes I got out the county jail 2008 Couple months I dropped the tape, then I was on my way My first single out and set the streets ablaze On location, shot that video in front of the cage 
trying to find my way through this fucking maze. Every concert, hundred niggas on the stage. I'm still active, so it's really just another day. I'm all this paranoid to book you, that affects your pay. And when you stop eating, that affects your weight. And when you get hungry, that affects your brain. See me, I'm not tripping, I respect the game. I hope y'all do, if I can't make it, I'm gonna take a chance. She ain't too many like us, we like finished bait. And I don't fuck with busters, I can't integrate. I know perfect time, it feels like I'm too late. But every single time I drop, they tell me I'm the great. I know perfect time, it feels like I'm too late. And I know I'm still great in spite of my mistakes. You know it's authentic every rhyme I say. My only regret is I made niggas wait. I know perfect time, it feels like I'm too late. And I know I'm still great in spite of my mistakes. You know it's authentic every rhyme I say. My only regret is I made niggas wait. Daddy Houston.